No, I podcast. This is a recording. This is Mulholland Drive. Side saddle. Bear Maybe. Back. <laughs> the, the, the cowboy of podcasters. Oh, Giddy wow. up. Speaking of cowboys. Welcome to Seen and Heard. <laughs> this is the podcast where two entertainment assistants go through the sight and sound top 100 greatest films of all time list. I'm Greg. I'm Jackie. And we're joined today by two very <laughs> special guests. Oh my God. Very oh special. No. Very, very, very special. Oh dear. Extremely. <laughs> oh my. Uh, this episode will be longer than usual because there are four of us in the room today what? to take on this beast of a movie. We have Victoria Harley and Chelsea Pope from the Breath of Fresh movie podcast in the studio. What? Hi, this is Victoria. Hi, I'm, I'm Chelsea. Thank you so much for having us. We're sharing a mic, so there may be delays between our responses. We're like uh, we're like the Ronettes, or like uh, <laughs> or like yeah. the girls in the movie who yeah. are sharing. The yeah, exactly. we're just gonna get exactly. like, Sylvia North, eat your heart out. Sixteen you know I mean? reasons. It was intentional. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Tell us about your show, you guys. Oh my god, thank you for that opening. Uh, yeah, we host a, a weekly film podcast um, where each week we watch a movie neither one of us has ever seen before, and then we talk about it, and um, it's with humor. I was going to be like, we may not talk about everything, but we'll talk about anything. Ding, ding. Spoilers. Ahoy. Uh, this is just our spiel. Because that's what we say before every... Spoilers are ahoy here as well. Yes. Yeah, here as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. We were, we were, you, you, uh, you emailed about merch recently, I think, of regarding spoilers ahoy. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. You should. We, we, you we, guys no, should do that. After yeah. high praise. It's because yeah. you called it out. You were yeah. like, you should, yeah. you should trademark that. I'm like, well, I don't know. We're we'll this. So we're working on it. Good. Working on a Chips Ahoy kind of look. Love we'll see. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a parody. But no, um, thank you so much. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of your podcast as well. Oh. Like, I think it's, you. you know, been really fun getting to know you guys both like through oh. the air and in person. Likewise. So thank you so much for having us in your home. No, it's really nice. To, c- to connect with with uh, just just other film fans in the community and also just like in the literal physical vicinity of LA and yeah, yeah. you know here you you and you and Victoria going to see the Heartbreak Kid last night it's just we you know, didn't even it's know. Like, didn't even know. You know I know but it's cool it's like okay like it's just nice to it's, I'm making friends you know it's great making yeah. friends is hard you guys it is <laughs> it's like, as an adult yeah it's hard it's definitely hard that's why we have cats yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah, like um, yeah, so Greg and I recently went on Breath of Fresh Movie to discuss yes. The French Lieutenant's Woman. And you are lovely. Very <laughs> fun. Yeah. Feel free to check it out that. It was super fun. Feel yeah. free to check out that episode. It's great. And I saw, because this will be airing on a Tuesday, Monday you guys drop. So yesterday, you guys have an episode on Bo is Afraid, right? Uh, it's coming up this week. Right. Yes. Yeah, or yeah, Monday. So Monday. by the time you hear this, it'll be out now. So go check there it you out. Go. You guys saw it already? We did. We did, yeah. Ooh, we'll have to wait and see what you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, did you see it yet? I didn't see it yet. All right. No spoilers. Slow. I saw no, it. No spoilers. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. You'll have to wait. You, <laughs> you guys have to wait. You should see it. You should see I'm it. I'm going to. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. this is a great transition into what else have you guys been watching? That's not Mulholland Drive. And not Bo. Or Bo. Afraid. Oh, um, well, Succession, for sure. <laughs> It's like Big, about to end, it right? It is. Yeah. It's about to end, you guys. Oh, man. What's going to happen? He died, right? <laughs> oh, shit. Spoiler. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Spoilers. Um, somebody died. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's. I mean, yeah, the whole internet, like, fucking blew up when that happened. Like, the LA Times article, the way that Victoria and I were kind of bitching about that. I was very bit. annoyed about that. That was a little tacky. Just a little opinion. too soon. Just too, too much. S- it was a little much. I think. Also, I was like, what? Okay, you're just, you're trying to tell us that you guys like succession. I, I got like, it. All right, great. Like, <laughs> art imitating life, imitating art things. I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, been watching that and uh, it's a lot of YouTube, I guess. <laughs> like YouTube. Watch a little, watch, I rewatched a Super uh, Nintendo 64 Super Mario gameplay. <laughs> like a speed run or something? Yeah, dude. Yeah. They, they, there are some, they, they know. I didn't know that that Mario could parkour. <laughs> and apparently you can you can you can you can fucking get Bowser down and eat that peach cake in, in like 45 minutes if wow. you really want. Wow. If you really want. Anyway, that's 
Oh. Your turn. Oh, my turn. Okay. <laughs> um, man, I'm trying to think about it, Ben. I haven't been watching many movies. I mean, similar. I'm usually the, on that. I'm usually like, screw TV. I watch movies. But <laughs> lately, no. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've seen this documentary like more than once before, but I've just been rewatching Wild Wild Country. Oh, it's, so good. It's been like yeah. a weird comfort watch in a weird way. Uh, the music is so good. I re- yeah. That's what I realized is the soundtrack yeah. is what's carrying me through. So um, that and, of course, the Heartbreak Kid, mm. which was just a treat. I don't, so And good. I don't, like, want to just be that person who's like, he was so good. No, you like, weren't the, there. The theater or any of the other stuff you guys, I mean, I you guys yeah, I mean, it was it was a good crowd. Great a lot crowd. Of, a lot of people. I was also there. Yes, yeah. so you were also there. Um, uh, it was so good. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, I, it's like any comedy in, in the crowd. It's just the best. I mean, certain lines just hit. Certain mm-hmm. shots really just, mm-hmm. spoke, like... Yeah, it was just it was just a great night, great and night of comedy. I agree, and I don't I don't see I feel like there aren't really comedies nowadays, right? Yeah, not that many. am I wrong? Like, when was the last not time you really. guys went to a movie that was like a straight comedy I, for real? That was good. Like that's that new. was good. Yeah. That's a great question. Keyword. Actually, I cannot. It seems immediately remember. Yeah, it seems like Banshees of Inisherin was funny. I mean, it was but funny, but that's not a no. It's not planes, trains, and automobiles, which no. even exactly. that has a sad ending. But yeah. it's true. <laughs> Bittersweet. Oh my god! Actually, no, it's pretty sad. It, I, it ruins me every time. <laughs> it's sad. Yeah, I really can't think of one. What have you guys been watching? Yeah. Well, I saw the Heartbreak Kid. Um, was it your first time seeing it? No, it was my second. Oh, but okay. the first time was on YouTube, which seemed to be the consensus of most All people of us. there. Which Where is else so can funny. You, find it? you can't. Nowhere. Yeah. It's nowhere. Yeah, yeah I've it's never so seen strange. it. It's so strange. Um, yeah. So good. Like, it's so funny and also really dark, but not at all in an obvious way. Um, I love it. It's incredible. Yeah. I look forward to the day when more people can see it. I don't understand Agreed. why it's like this. Because Bristol Myers Squibb owns the rights through this weird acquisition thing, and somebody needs to go negotiate with them, like Criterion. with with like one of the like with yeah. one of the guys in Mulholland Drive who's in those meetings. That's what we need. <laughs> one of the mobsters. Yeah. yeah, like the guy who lets the espresso just fall yeah. out of his mouth. Oh yeah. We have mobsters in LA. Like, where are you guys? Yeah. Like, what are you? What Stand are you up. doing? Movie mobsters. Mobsters that work for the rights of movies yeah. really that's a like, thing they're yeah. called studio heads yeah that's true actually. just get your priorities straight no, you guys <laughs> um, I also finally watched Breaking Dawn part one and part two <laughs> <laughs> that's legit such a weird relationship with Twilight when I was in high school for a minute I was really obsessed with it I read all the books I was really into the movies but then when the third movie came out, I was just like, this is actual garbage. And I was also really into Harry Potter. And so people were doing this weird thing where it was like, if you liked one, you couldn't like the other. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, I'm picking Harry Potter, obviously. <laughs> it's like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they have not nothing the in common. Yeah. So I, I ignored Twilight for a really long time. I dismissed it that it's just silly nonsense, which is mostly true. <laughs> um, but then now I've come to realize that's what makes it so fun and so great. And it's I've having had, a renaissance. I've had such a good time rewatching these movies, but I had never seen Breaking Dawn, either of those. That's yeah. shocking. I know. And so what a treat. Have you guys seen them? I have. Breaking Dawn part one yeah. and part two? Yeah. Have I've only seen the first Twilight movie. Same. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> but I got to say that. I mean, you get it. You I, get it. I, I, think, yeah. I do think Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson's image have totally changed for it's, me in yeah. the ensuing years. Incredible how much they've changed. Yeah. Um, or yeah. just they've always been that way, but they just like revealed themselves. They just exactly. full, their 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 career choices, their booking choices, just fully reactive to wanting to distance themselves from that franchise exactly. as <laughs> much as possible. Exactly. Which is funny because it's it's it, yeah it's it's like it's almost like yeah time did it some did a little bit of of service, service yeah to exactly. kind of it rejuvenated the franchise I, in a way. I mean, it's still ridiculous. Don't get it's me wrong. It's still ridiculous, like, but then we so ridiculous. It but can now get we so like much it. worse. Is yeah. the thing I think in the sense it can like, get worse. Renesmee yes. it can well, always maybe. get worse. Yes, it can always. But then you know you got you got like Fifty Shades of Grey, That's and true. which is which is a fanfic based on a fanfic, which is like right. this, it's kind of the. The copy of a copy of a copy That's thing, true. and then you're like, maybe Twilight isn't, isn't that, that bad, bad in comparison to how 
how many deviations we can go down. Mm. Exactly. I guess, but um, it's like it's you, like Nixon wasn't wrong. so. Bad. You were so not wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been watching. Tight. Nice. Uh, the, I, my favorite one that I saw in the last week was a film called Queen of Diamonds by Nina Menkes oh. from 1991. Is that the one, the gambling one? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. Oh, incredible. It really blew me away. Um, saw that. I saw a movie called The Wild Boys by Bertrand Mandico, who his big film last year was like After Paradise, or so, which I have not seen yet. Um, I got to see On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Oh. Uh, at the Arrow, which is like the second time I've been to the Arrow in the 10 years I've lived here because it's so far. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, George Lazenby was supposed to be there, but uh, he got sick or something. He couldn't come. And then sure. <laughs> I did see the new <laughs> Evil Dead movie, Evil Dead Rises. Oh, yeah. Have you guys seen it? Not, Not yet. yet. I was, was disappointed because okay. oh, okay. the buzz around it is good. I yeah, mean, people it's, are really hyping it. Online. It's like perfectly fine. Yeah. I think it's just it's like someone wrote like a really by the numbers like possession movie, and then Sam Raimi was like, "Oh wait, we can like make that an Evil Dead movie. Let's just mm. let's put the name on it and add a couple things from the series, and boom, you got an Evil yeah. Dead movie." And that's what it yeah. felt it like. It feels like that with a lot of like franchise sequel, like, like the Paranormal Activity movies feel a lot like like that is the further down you go, yeah, it's kind of like oh, we're just kind of shoehorning it. Like if we add this, we we stamp it with the the known name, yeah. then that'll that'll mm-hmm. guarantee some numbers or exactly, something. Yeah. Because it does seem very from the previews I've seen so disconnected, and and this also like ten years after the. I liked the reboot, you know. Right. I liked the the what 2014, uh, yeah, was, 2013, 2014, 2013, something like one of that. Those. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. was really solid, and then this feels very. Anyway. Yeah, and just like I, yeah, to me, Evil Dead is like Bruce Campbell or Sam Raimi's like kinetic energy, and when yeah. you lose both of those things, it's like it's, so it's not Evil Dead then, or like. But I did. I also liked the remake it's, from like. It's 10 like years you better ago. stick the landing if you're going to make a hard left. Yeah. From the, the charm, I guess, if you will, of what of that. Yeah. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> K- kinetic. That's a great word yeah. to describe that. Yeah, because that's like the word. whole charm of those movies. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. The way Bruce Campbell like w- had to go work out like to get that buff and just did it totally for the movie and not for the magazines or any of that BS. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bruce Campbell's like the greatest, like most game actor. He's so game. <laughs> He's yeah. so game. Yeah. And it's like he's still young ish and like He's just the did, best, he did the tv series and so i'm like why yeah. didn't we just make this uh, bruce campbell I starring think evil dead we like, should put bruce campbell on our money i think i think so like, too yeah. he is a national treasure yeah yeah <laughs> um anyway <laughs> uh since we have four angelinos here i think it's appropriate wow. <laughs> um, for this week's film which is number oh do you do you know yeah i know <laughs> 28 in 2012 and number eight in 2022 Ooh. Yeah. So which we'll talk about so moved up yeah, yeah. i know it's i know math. Drive, by the way mulholland drive yeah. we've even mentioned it yeah at the beginning mulholland drive that's oh, good yeah oh right i have <laughs> to properly intro where it. Where it moved. yeah go continue. no no <laughs> <laughs> no we'll talk about it for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is quite the jump yeah. to be in that top 10 is a uh, something do you th- i mean i think rightly I mean, I know Amazing. there's a lot of movies, but I don't know. Having just come off it again today, I was like, this is pretty excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah, I think it's his best. And, you know, that's what, just, like, let's save this. Let's yeah, save yeah, this yeah. for initial yeah, thoughts. Yeah, yeah. From 2001, this is David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive was released in 2001 and was written and directed by David Lynch. Cinematography by Peter Deming. Music by Angelo Badalamenti. Wide-eyed, aspiring actress Betty Elms arrives in Los Angeles to pursue her dreams. She's staying at the apartment of her aunt, who is out of town shooting a movie. 
She discovers a woman in the apartment who is suffering from amnesia after a car accident on Mulholland Drive. The woman calls herself Rita after spotting a poster for the 1946 film Gilda starring Rita Hayworth. Her purse has thousands of dollars of cash in it and a strange blue key. Meanwhile, a film director, Adam Kesher, discovers his wife is having an affair with the pool man and is pressured by mobsters to cast their choice of actress, Camilla Rhodes, in his new picture. Betty and Rita set out to solve the mystery of who Rita is. The name Diane Selwyn comes to Rita's mind and they visit her listed address. In Diane's apartment, they find a dead body on the bed. That night, Betty and Rita make passionate love only to leave the house at 4 a.m. to attend a show at Club Silencio. After the show, Betty discovers a blue cube in her purse. When Rita unlocks the cube with the key she found in her purse, it falls to the ground. The film then takes a shift. Betty is now Diane Selwyn, living in the same apartment Betty and Rita previously visited. She and Camilla Rhodes, an actress and the former Rita, have just broken up, and Camilla is now in a relationship with Adam, who is directing a film both of the women are appearing in. Diane hires a hitman to kill Camilla, and he tells her when the deed is done, she will find a blue key in her house. The film ends with Diane shooting herself while being harassed by images of an old couple Betty met on a plane over to the City of Angels. The film stars Naomi Watts as Betty Elms slash Diane Selwyn, Laura Herring as Rita slash Camilla Rhodes, Justin Thoreau as Adam Kesher, also starring Ann Miller as the apartment manager Coco, and Robert Forster as a detective in one scene. Don't forget about Dan Hedaya. My, yes, Dan my Hedaya. Boy. I love him as well. <laughs> Dan Hedaya as a mobster. Um, did you guys know that Laura Herring was the first Hispanic woman to be crowned Miss USA in 1985? No, I oh. didn't know that. And I she's, no idea. she married a German count. Oh. And she's actually a countess. Oh, Hell wow. Yeah, Crazy, right? Guess I did life. not know that. The film was originally an open-ended pilot for ABC, but upon viewing a rough cut, the studio decided against it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is insane. <laughs> the pilot ends as they discover the body in Diane's apartment. Then, Studio Canal came in and decided to fund the project as a feature, and Mulholland Drive became an American-French co-production. 20 months had passed since the initial shoot, and they had to pick up where they left off, recreating sets and props. The film was shot in Los Angeles. Aunt Ruth's apartment building is in Hancock Park. Diane's apartment is on Griffith Park Boulevard in a complex known as the Snow White Cottages. They're located just a few blocks from the original Disney Studios and are said to have inspired the animators of the 1937 film Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Which one's that? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, there are eight cottages, so it's the perfect dwelling for Snow White and her men. Uh, her and they men. allegedly served as office space for the animators while making the film. That's so LA. I know. <laughs> um... The Palace Theater is Club Silencio. Pink's Hot Dogs makes an appearance. And Caesars is the name of the diner that turns into Winkies. It was located in Gardenia. Now it's closed. David Lynch apparently refused to give even his cast an explanation about the unsolved mystery of the film. But he did make it clear to Justin Thoreau that he was not a reflection of himself. That was like the one thing he clarified. Yeah. Like, you are not playing me. Uh, the film premiered at Cannes in 2001. Lynch won Best Director, sharing the prize with Joel Cohen for The Man Who Wasn't There. Lynch was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Director, and this was Ann Miller's last movie. It was named the best film of the decade by Los Angeles Film, by Los Angeles film Critics Association, Calle du Cinema, IndieWire, The Village Voice, Time Out New York, and Slant Magazine. Those are my specs. You have more. I see you. I just have notes. a couple. Go ahead. I have a couple. Um, so the f the stuff that was shot for the pilot basically leads up to when they first sleep together. That stuff is all pilot stuff. And then right. obviously it gets very, very R-rated, which was shot the 20 months later. And then the whole last section of the movie where the camera goes into the box obviously was not uh, right. filmed for the pilot. But I think everything else, more or less before that, I think was for the pilot. Mm. It's on YouTube. Man, I really had no idea about any of this. So that's like really? really, yeah. I mean, I know some things about David Lynch, <laughs> but I didn't realize this was like initially a pilot for a show. It's weird, right? I know too. According to Sherilyn Fenn, this was intended originally to be an Audrey Horn spinoff from Twin Peaks. So the Naomi Watts character was supposed to be Audrey. 
That's what she says, at least. Interesting. Yeah. I have, yeah, because I have heard that, and I think it's like an Easter eggy thing, but in Club Silencio, I think Ronette Pulaski is supposed to be seated oh. in, in like the corner. So I think like there's some kind of connection to the Laura Palmer thing, and certainly mm-hmm. there's lots of other shit to yeah, tie yeah, it in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Hot take. I think it's better that it's a movie. I yeah, don't know. I agree. I, well, you know, he ran into that problem as well. It's interesting that he would want to go back to television or attempt to after the situation with Twin Peaks where mm-hmm. he, he had to kind of relinquish control of the narrative um, with that. And, you know, season two went where it went. And it's like, <laughs> well, but just sort of how how I can understand the premise with Twin, Twin Peaks of it being an ongoing sort of don't get caught like you're you're missing the forest for the tree, trees if you're getting too caught up in the murder mystery like it's more about the twin peaks itself and it's like but in this case it feels so personal to um betty slash diane mm. that it's hard for me to imagine it not I, I don't know how you would sustain this beyond maybe like like a like a mini series pers- i don't know right not that i, I wouldn't not that i wouldn't be compelled to watch it but just mm-hmm. i like that part of what i think makes this such a strong uh, feature for him is that it is one of his more concise works. And yes, there is like uh, lots of room for interpretation. Mm-hmm. I have my views on it, but I like that there is something um, definitive about mm-hmm. it. I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I can't help. I agree with you. I think it works great as a film, I guess right before we get into initial thoughts, but oh, I do, yeah. I am like sad. Like I would have loved to have seen the series. Oh this, yeah, absolutely. Cause I am such a, peaks head um, what, but, what direction could that have gone you know like, yeah, yeah i don't know he yeah, just knows how to sp- he knows like yeah. when he had control over twin peaks like the draw of the, of the mystery and stuff was yeah. just so hypnotic yeah. and then too like has anyone seen his follow-up to twin peaks um on the air most people don't know he had another show it only ran for like six episodes it's a slapstick comedy about these people running a radio station you know the guy from Twin Peaks that plays Richard Tremaine, the guy that like yeah. romances Lucy, who kind of seems like from another era? Yeah, like, yeah, I hated that guy. He's like the lead. He's the lead <laughs> in that show. <laughs> so maybe like don't watch joke. it. You're not in on it. <laughs> no, that's fun. Yeah, no more, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Um, well, okay, let's do initial thoughts. But as you know, this film is like you like you just said, Chelsea, like this is such um, this is Lynch's most popular movie. It's his most accessible movie. Yeah. And because of it, a lot of people have seen this movie that maybe this is their only David Lynch movie because it's pretty mainstream um, and has been since it came out. But like, let's talk a little bit because there is no definitive explanation of like, this is what happens in the movie. There are lots of people who think different things mm. including the the cast and crew so let's just go around and talk about first impressions first time you saw it i guess maybe talk a little bit about what the movie means to you and we'll just kind of go around in a circle yeah let's do it yeah want to start um okay sure <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way. uh i'm not gonna i'm gonna save some of the this for our blue velvet episode which is upcoming but um yeah david i mean like any <laughs> man like yeah sure any like white boy with glasses like david lynch is one of my heroes and um you know i've his movies are deeply you know that's a part of the reason i wanted to make movies in the first place and uh i remember the first time i saw this i was in high school the movie had was a couple years old at that point i think i probably saw this in 2003 so it was just a couple years old and i remember a friend of mine i was just getting into david lynch i had just seen like blue velvet and Eraserhead, and my friend was like oh you got to see this movie mahal and drive i was like oh that's a david lynch movie okay yeah i'll see that and i remember my friend telling me he's like i've seen it 10 times because i'm trying to figure out what it means and he like showed me all these notes he had of like it's funny because uh, he wasn't like a big like film guy, but this movie like had a spell on him, which I think again is why it remains so famous. Um, but so I, I immediately went out and saw it and I loved it. And I think what works so well about this movie is it is this middle ground of it's like a mostly straightforward film and it's a really compelling mystery. And I think the David Lynch touches are more palatable in this film than some of his other movies. Even his like kind of warm up for this, which was Lost Highway, I feel like is such a lesser accessible film. Like that one's that's a hard one. It's a hard one. I didn't like that one the first time I saw it. Maybe the first two times I saw it. But um, yeah, so I think this film rightfully, you know, is like on the top ten now. I 
you know what though it's not my favorite david lynch movie so i would not put it on the top 10 i think it has a place on the top 100 which which my, one would you be oh, sorry. My, it's, I the, no, no. Right when you were it's the twin peaks it. movie it's fire oh, walk with me cool i think too <laughs> similar to this like the laura palmer character is so fully drawn in that film and sherilyn fenn um sorry cheryl lee <laughs> gives such an incredible performance and it's such a cathartic piece of cinema. I think Naomi Watts does something similar there here, but I don't think it quite reaches the the emotional heights of Firewalk with Me. So that one's my favorite. I think I also like Blue Velvet more than this. Maybe this. I think I might even like Eraserhead more than this. <laughs> but I like love those movies. Like those are all like five out of fives for me. This one's like a four point five slash. This is almost a five. Anyway, who cares about numbers? <laughs> it's a great movie. I love this movie. I think. Look. Um, I don't read a lot into David Lynch films and I, it's not who I am as a person. It's funny because doing this podcast with Jackie, she wants to get in there, get her hands dirty, pick everything apart, (laughs) which is fun. But like, it's not my go to mode. Like I always feel a movie first, even if I don't quite understand it, I'm just like, okay, well Mm. I get what I'm supposed to feel, or I feel this is my response to it. So I don't have some big, like this means this and this connects to this. I know one of the bigger theories out there is that um, it's all a dream. Like she is the Diane character living this really depressed life. She kills herself and all of this sort of like conjures up in her head and her dying moments, like the part, you know, the, the first two thirds of the movie. I think that sounds pretty good. I've also heard a theory that they're like alternate universes that kind of cross into each other a little bit. And I'm cool with that too. Um, But David Lynch, yeah, he specifically, you know, he does not, ever vocalize what his films mean because honestly my take i don't think he has like a through line necessarily i think he comes from you know he's big on meditation and Mm -hmm. i think he's just like impulsive and like i have this scene about it in my head of a guy sitting on a chair and a woman comes in and this and then i think he just does it and it's Mm -hmm. like so i don't necessarily think there's like a through line that's just my take but i just love the feel of this movie it was as a person that lives in la and loves Hollywood history and the the sort of creepiness like Hollywood is superficial and magical but it's also nightmarish (laughs) and what a great film that sort of capture all the different parts of Hollywood so yeah I love the movie yeah (laughs) yeah that's great (laughs) no I 100% agree with like all that yeah yeah Victoria yeah oh my god it's my turn (laughs) yeah all right so as I turn the mic toward me all now I mean no I'm with you um this movie like I've seen it a number of times but um I think this time, like more than ever, I felt like it, it really felt elegiac. Like, like this is all about, um, like the dark power that craves young blood. And wow. I really feel like this, um, like the, the darkness, the underbelly of, of this world, it, it, it's so gestural. Like we just see, you know, powerful people behind glass or curtains. We don't single words uttered over phone lines. You, you get such a sense of the power. And where, that these people have unquestioned power, but you don't know who they are, and it kind of doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just felt like more of the sadness and and it, thinking of um, actually Firewalk with me and that that last shot, you know, the bright the bright light kind of washing everything out. Um, there's a lot of similar shots in this of that, and um, yeah, it felt like uh, like yeah, transmutive or something. I don't know. Totally. I'm usually not like this hard into things but it just <laughs> but just this time i felt really sad for all the young women yeah. that yeah. have passed through and been ruined and that was kind of i felt yeah. like i felt like this movie was really um like a song for them yeah beautiful wow just drop mic drop i love that, <laughs> I love that. chelsea Oh, you know, I feel like I kind of, I, I did a little preemptive. If you want to, I can, I can add more stuff, but I, I no, would say. Go ahead. You know, it's just, your turn. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah, to both of your points, I think that, uh, I think that there's a lot of through lines thematically with, uh, his, with David Lynch. I think, you know, David Lynch is definitely a feminist and I, and I see that in a lot of his work. And I also appreciate that he is decidedly, for being as seemingly inaccessible or, or, you know, maybe just overly gilded or esoteric, I actually think he's extremely unpretentious. And I really appreciate that. Um, I initially was somebody who was not a huge fan. I remember, like, I was dating a guy who fucking loved Lost Highway. And I just, I had to sit <laughs> through that twice. And I would just, like, I just was like, you just say what you mean. I'm one of those, those kinds of people that gets a little... Um, 
I get I uh I get a little pissed off not like I love puzzle pieces and I I love I love puzzle type of movies but I think at a certain point there is um when it feels overindulgent and I will say I have more clemency towards Lost Highway in lieu of having now watched his other Mm -hmm. works including Firewalks including Twin Peaks and um, Laura Palmer is such a great example of what I think can be applicable to this interpretation to to the interpretation of Mulholland Drive which is that Betty and Diane could both be real it's all Mm -hmm. the same you can women contain multitudes, mm-hmm. people contain multitudes. I did, you know, Laura Palmer was 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 snorting cocaine and she was also feeding uh, the elderly. Like you know, it's like the yeah. the, the the um the duality mm-hmm. of people. Mm-hmm. Um and also there's it's a little bit of like a uh it's a, it feels a little bit like a if you if you're really reducing it to somebody who hasn't seen it like a like a fancy sliding doors in a way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fancy uh, uh, a bougie sliding doors yeah. a little bit. Like it's not who's to, like that. You can interpret it as all material and real that's happening. You can interpret it as all a dream, but there's also that added element of like, even if it is just cerebral, mm. it's still real to you. You know, it's always that meta quality. Like he, he loves, he loves his viewers and he's not going to tell mm. you what to think. And it makes sense that he wouldn't want Justin Thoreau to just perform a facsimile of him because he wouldn't mm. want it to just come off as this, as this self right. indulgent jerk off fest. It's more about letting you just in d- develop your own intuition. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm. There you go. Beautifully that. said. Wow. I feel like I'm the odd one out on this. One. <laughs> I go no, off. I love this movie. I love this movie. I'm just not a big, I'm not like a hundred percent on board with David Lynch and Greg knows this. Like I do like him. I like his work, but I'm not Mm -hmm. obsessed. I don't know. That's okay. I thank you. Um, (laughs) But I do love this movie. I really love this movie. And I feel like it, everyone who's just like, it's too confusing. It's too complicated. I think it's actually really simple. Greg, I agree with your interpretation. It's just like, sure. She, is have she, the first half is this fever dream she has about her life and she turns her life into a movie the woman she loves turns into a femme fatale and it's about this bigger theme of like falsity and false dreams and hopes and promises in hollywood i love what you yeah. said about the women of hollywood that's so so great um so yeah i mean i do love this movie but i'm not too too confident about top 10 <laughs> that's fine. I don't know. Well, I mean, there are so many movies There's that so is, many it movies. is understandably <laughs> incendiary that that there are so many that wouldn't be. I mean, top ten is a cruel. It's, it's a cruel challenge. It's a cruel challenge. I agree. Inherently, I agree. The, they're showing the cards of the of the sort of like the general mix of people putting in like putting in their two cents that carries weight to create that list. Right. Like when you see the pattern of what mm-hmm. is there, like you know, it's just right. People are not going to not project and i love how like fuck it he is about i'm not explaining anything i love that i really respect that but i can't shake the feeling that if it was anyone else it would not be allowed and so it makes me think about like directors who want to do a similar thing but probably can't who would who would would allow someone to make this afraid Um. i mean yeah now man i don't know I don't want to. I don't want to jump ahead on your notes, but to the point of what you were just talking about of this. Oh, make a, you interpret it however you want. I do think this is the one movie where he may, and I think it's come up in other interviews where he's like, I may have overly like telegraphed how to interpret. Really? Just from because that used to be an insert. And I was actually looking for it in my yeah. DVD. The insert. The, so that's my next the point. The ten clues thing because it actually sort of overly indicates mm. one interpretation Let's talk about but it. i don't think he really wants you to do that so that's right. why yeah. like mine didn't end up having that when i got it brand new wow. but then I when i rented it it did used to have it and i think he was like oh shit actually maybe i'm i'm putting the bumpers up on the bowling lane too much well you here. know what, you know it's funny i think i owned this movie a couple times on dvd because i would lend it out and someone would just yeah. keep it and then i have to buy it again and i think <laughs> like the first copy or two had that sheet like david lynch's 10 clues to understand i think it got rescinded and then I later it was like not in there yeah anymore. and it's certainly yeah. not discussed now it's not in the criterion so it's something that i think he does regret well i have uh, yeah but yeah exactly. that's my next why point. I, I couldn't help Let's but talk notice about it, it. Yeah. so 
the original DVD release included a little card with 10 hints from the director. It was called David Lynch's 10 Clues to Unlocking the so Thriller. It very clearly indicates a specific interpretation. Which is? I can understand why. Which I think that the Betty Diane dream. The yeah. idea of, of somebody getting ruined through Hollywood and, right. and having a bit of a, maybe a, right. I was afraid, kind but of then fever dream about it. But then it. there's <laughs> also like, okay, you know. the first one. Pay particular attention to the beginning of the film. At least two clues are revealed before the credits. There's well, yeah. just the jitterbug. It's the jitterbug and her falling into her pillow, actually. Right. Mm. So it's yes. like someone falling into a pillow. Yeah. Which, which, but which, but pillow, it's the pillow right? of that room. Oh, room and, right. And that's. Yeah. But, but there's another one. Well, she's posing with the old people. It's like over yeah, the jitterbug. Yeah, she's you're like right. posing with right. them. It's so almost composite. like she's on a red carpet. People like to interpret that she won a jitterbug a jitterbug contest. Oh, she does say that. Well, she says, she says it, it twice. Never mind. In the, both the dream and reality. No, it's, no, that's okay. Like it's that's part of what yeah. this is. is the, yeah. The, 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 no, she says it at the dinner. She that's said, right. That's she how said, I got into she acting. She says it at the dinner, and I think. Well, I think she mentions it in the air the air line, when she's riding from the airport, right? Oh yeah, maybe. I think you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just when she's chit chatting with the old folks. I don't remember. But why well, is she, she definitely at the dinner with the old folks? So I think the old folks are they're like her the parents. judges or some or the parents. Oh, maybe the judges. I thought maybe the judges. And they're too they old to be parents. Maybe re, grandparents. They got reimagined as people that are encouraging her to. That's great. Like, from there, oh, you're gonna take. Oh yeah, go to Hollywood, sweetie. The judges. And so they go from being these judges that rewarded her this one time to being the people that give her the like the golden See. ticket to Hollywood, being like, then, well, go on, honey. And then they taunt her. <laughs> And she she's all you know she's all fucked up at the end, and then it's like these people are now mocking her right. for having like why like like why would you tell me yeah <laughs> no no that. those old it's so funny those old people like, uh, it's like those old people <laughs> I, I know I'm, being, I'm just so ageist I um, love them no no, no, no. That's what they are I <laughs> know I think this was like one of the times I actually noticed that like yeah. because there's a there's a shot of them laughing in the back of a car she's not in the scene right and I'm like. Are they demons? That's like, what I thought too. <laughs> yeah, I think she feels that way. Like I could see that being the interpretation by the end. It's like, oh, these are demons that in her head that that were like, earworms in in my head that said that like I should ro- go down this road and ruin yeah. myself. Well, like, like I lied to those people because they said I'm going to be looking for you on the big screen. It's like all those people you let down yeah. that like exactly. live in your head. Yeah. Exactly. You right. Know? Exactly. But That's beautiful. When they come in the end, you guys, I mean that is I a laugh. little ridiculous. Like, I, laugh. I think you're right to laugh. Yeah. Do you guys laugh? when they're like tiny oh no I, I was I was fucking terrified it's actually. terrifying <laughs> I was actually fully I mean, terrified oh, no, I think it's boy. funny I mean I think oh, I think fair, it's, it's meant to be scary but I think if you watch it like in the broad daylight <laughs> sure it's it looks a little good or how, if you watch like watching it you know what's coming mute it because yeah there's certain things the that first a lot of screaming time, yeah. I think the first time I watched it I was scared but this time around I was, and it was 10 a.m. I must say yeah. I, I was See, like this that's, is that's morning yeah. viewing that's yeah. morning viewing I rewatched it at like midnight so yeah that's I think great yeah. these no, films are these like twilight movies I wanted to yeah. watch it at night I was like I can't watch it during the day and then I ended that's up watching great. it during the yeah. day um, the next one is just no Notice appear- this is number two? Yeah, notice appearances of the red lampshade. Right. Oh. And of course, the red lampshade is next to the phone that she picks up that... I think it's it's oh it's one of it feels like one of those clues that's overly indicative of trying to tether you to the Diane identity I think so too. thing. Yeah. Like the, again, I feel like it's I see why it would get pulled that he would initially say all this right. stuff and then be like, no, you know what? Let people think what they want to think. Um, like, but then it also like. It's funny because it's the it goes back to the whole plot about like the girl is still missing and then they call someone yeah. and then they call that phone. So yeah. it's like she is the one that ordered the hit on her. Mm-hmm. You're right. It is. Yeah. I think it's overly. It's. Ch- it, that, I don't know. You're like you go through the whole yeah, list of everything. It's... That no, sorry. <laughs> I'm mean, sorry. I didn't mean like you do your. Jo- no, I meant it more just like if you oh go God. you go through when when you go through it, it does feel very like this is this is actually a very clear. A suggestion. Next yeah. one is: Can you hear the title of the film that Adam Kesher is auditioning actresses for? Is it mentioned again? Sylvia North story. Mm-hmm. I mean, I it know. is mentioned mm-hmm. again. I don't know that one. Kind of. Yeah, like, I don't know. Huh. But then people have interpreted Sylvia North. She says she's from. Where does she say she's from? Some lake. Yeah. Is the is it significant that it happens to be that know. particular uh, biopic that they're doing? Like, yeah. what, what's the, uh, what's yeah, the what, thematic what's the, relevance of that of that life of story? That. Yeah. yeah. And then an accident is a terrible event. Notice the location of the accident. Mulholland Drive. Well, yeah, but that's like super <laughs> obvious. I can't, <laughs> in the title. I can't <laughs> imagine that actually. Do you know David Lynch's quote on um, the road? 
and why this is called Mulholland Drive. Yeah. Tell he us. he said literally, he's like, at night, oh, I was trying to do, I can't do David Lynch. <laughs> at night, you ride on the top of the world. In the daytime, you ride on top of the world too, but it's mysterious. And there's a hair of fear because it goes into remote areas. You feel the history of Hollywood in that road. Yeah. So true. I remember first moving to LA and being up like running errands as a PA yeah. on, on Mulholland Drive and overlooking the city. And you're like, I've made it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got that, it's got that duality of treachery and, yeah. and prestige. I will say, th- th- be the pisser on that one. The accident is the same place that um, Diane gets out of the car for for her oh. to go to oh. because she has to walk up to the house. So right. the right. added significance of like her life being shattered at that. At that Again, point. like I said, just right. it's, o- it's, it's overly indicative right. of this but very do you specific. Guys, yeah, do you guys see that interpretation? Is that... I, I see it, but I also res- like us respect and appreciate that it can be more open ended. Like when I first had rented it when I was like fucking like fourteen or something, and it had it in the in that, and I was I went down that rabbit hole of trying to well, there's got to be an explanation and a reason for all this, and right. so it 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 just kind of pinballed in that way. But I think it's kind of nice too yeah. because like if it was really complicated, it wouldn't. I don't know. Like I think initial thoughts on this movie should be your not your only thoughts, but those should be the most indicative to you about how you feel about this movie is your initial thoughts. And truly the first time I saw it, that's immediately what I thought. And I was like, there's no need to to dive deeper. I'm just going to like enjoy this. That's unusual for you. (laughs) I know a little bit. Um, There's one more that's like, I mean, there's a bunch there's yeah. uh, Who gives a key and why? I mean, that's like the blue key, obviously. Notice the robe, the ashtray, the coffee cup. That's such a David Lynch clue. Like I don't get that one. I don't know. I don't know. Um, this one's good. What is felt, realized, and gathered at the Club Silencio? That it's all an illusion and how moved we can yeah. be by something that doesn't exist. Mm. It's again, all all of that clue stuff is so yeah. very clearly telegraphed of like look very closely at Betty at who at slash Diane. Right. Like the, the you know. Um, the coffee, the right. all that stuff, you know. Right. And, oh, you know what? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, I just I, when she when they're at Silencio, they're both crying, but Betty's the one that's that's shaking, you shaking. know, having that seizure yeah, kind of thing, I and didn't then even think about and that. then she disappears after, and then mm. it's uh, it's yeah, the, it's the Rita portal who has to open the key, yeah, to, and then. It's Silencio is such a classic Lynch scene in terms of yeah. like if there's a musical they performance, a show, yeah. they have the red curtains. It's extremely Twin Peaks. Because yeah. I watched yeah. that after the fact. I was like, oh, it's, you it's know. very red room. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he has yeah. themes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and too, actually, I just remembered with the coffee cups. I wonder if he's talking about because the first time we're at Winkies <laughs> with Patrick, I forget the guy's name is from Mad Men. Fishler. He's yeah. great. Uh, One of those great character chips. actors. I love him. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> take it from a nut. Uts are better than nuts. Yeah. Um, so he, uh, <laughs> he the the first scene with him at Winkies. Yeah. When him and the Bruce Greenwood lookalike guy get up to leave Winkies to go behind the dumpster, there's a shot and they're walking towards the door to leave the diner, and you see two just two coffee cups on a table. It's not their table because their table had like like he hadn't touched his food. Right. The camera like makes a note of like oh he right, hasn't I touched his food. That. Yeah. You just see two cups, and then later when Naomi Watson, Laura Herring are there, like you see those two cups in the same place. It's almost connecting like yeah. those things happen on the same day yeah like... and she also has the same mug in her house i noticed when oh. she's making mm-hmm. herself coffee she has that classic like brown 60s cup hmm. <laughs> also fun to note that the woman that plays the hobo behind the the oh, diner yeah. is the woman that plays the nun in like the conjuring uh movies it's the oh. same woman and I, she's done a couple other things now, too she's in princess diaries <laughs> oh you're right oh. she is yeah <laughs> slay uh, <laughs> super slay uh uh, that so that that it's, creature the sock. Let, I, I know you got these clues, but I got it. No, it's one of the clues. Oh, okay. I mean, it what, says what note it? the occurrences surrounding the man behind Winkies. Is it a man? Because no, I, it's supposed to be her. I thought right, like like a sludgy body that was left somewhere. I don't know. Maybe this that's why my they took away the insert. It's, it's a gender odd. issue. Like we should, we just. It's not. We shouldn't. We're going down. We're I going. thought it was supposed to be like Betty slash Diane. I think it's right. God. I, Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> because he says he's like he's the one that's doing it and then he has the cube. Yeah. yeah. Or the devil. Yeah. The god or the devil. Someone. Same. Yeah. Some higher Same being. Yeah. I think um, this there's no god in this film. Guys, yeah, you guys know what I love about that winky scene? Mm-hmm. Um 
that there's is called no, white keys. <laughs> but yeah, that too. There's no background noise. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, that's a note with, for me. <laughs> with the with the yeah. crash site too before, and when the two of the two women go to Winkies to look for that payphone, they're outside, but you don't hear anything. That's right. like a, that's like a Lynch staple because he really he it. does the sound for a lot of his own films. He's often yeah, like the great. sole credited sound designer or like one of a couple. And yeah, that's his whole thing is the taking away of sounds. And even right there with the Racerhead, his first film, right? Yeah. You just hear this like industrial churn, right? Yeah. And that's no, his whole I, thing. And I love that. Like, I, I know that sound is important. It's an obvious thing to say, but it does seem as though maybe people don't lovingly spend the time with it the way he does. They and that don't. Is, right. A great example, too, the beginning of Blue Velvet when the guy has a heart attack and the camera goes under the grass and to all the bugs uh, and you hear the like. Yeah. 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 He's such a master at that. Yeah. He is. God. Uh, the last clue, which kind of trips me up. Where's Aunt Ruth? Oh. They never specify that she, I did notice it's never specified in my mind. She was always an actress, but they never specify that. She just says she's going to make a movie. Right. Yeah. Right. When we see the redheaded lady. I, th- I always kind of thought that was the implication yeah. of her existing in that space. Same. And she, at the end, she came back in yeah. at one point. Yeah. She's the one who finds the, sees the box or whatever. And, and not to like, I mean, there's also a, a reference yeah. at the audition that yeah. the guy who was in the casting room was friends with her on. Right, because he's like, you've this, done your aunt proud. Is she this omnipotent type? I don't, I don't want to reference Bo right now. <laughs> I'm trying to. Is she because the fact that she like has somehow communicated to Coco, there's someone in your apartment, and she doesn't like that, and we don't want them there. Yeah, you get them, get them out. They're trouble. Like yeah. it's like there's this idea I of like love, surveillance going yeah. on with Aunt, Aunt Ruth as yeah. far as like there's people watching, people watching. I think or somebody that's supposed to be like you're, you're looked after within within. A certain set of parameters, I guess. I don't right. know if that makes sense. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? No, it does. Yeah, that's, I got that vibe. Um, I love Coco Linois. So I, I just want to be her. Yeah, her. no, sure. that is such a classic <laughs> LA. Like this yeah. movie. I mean, you can watch it and be anywhere in the world and get something from it impressionistic. But the longer I've lived in Los Angeles, the more I'm like, God, every detail is perfect. Like, yeah. even just the the Birds of Paradise palms behind yeah. them like just everything is very even that it's not sunny all the time it's yeah. kind of this like weird gray overcast and this woman this landlady it feels like <laughs> such, <laughs> such like such a a, a hollywood figure I like know. she's still doing the glam uh-huh. you know she's got the stories it reminds me of and this is a tiny tiny role but elmarie wendell played a similar character in an episode of seinfeld yes when, yes the keys the keys. the keys kramer is staying at this uh nasty you know los angeles place and she's oh! the landlady and she talks about i, I wonder was if that's a reference like i, I mean, wonder if that would be into i could see that with him he's he, yeah. he a big fan of television and comedy i like. mean but she talks about being in the movies and how right. she was in like a yeah. three stooges short yeah. and she was like but you know they, they stole a baby but the baby died <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and they were like and then they all get sent to trial and they're executed and, and i think we're just like uh yeah, I don't remember that one. <laughs> yeah. That's such a great moment. I know that was such a digression, but that's no, perfect. I feel like it's relevant. That's so it's a relevant. Reference. It's a, it's, I love it. It's part of the charm also, of this movie. Any excuse reference. to talk about Elmarie Wendell there as well. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. May she rest in peace. Also, the guy, sorry, as a side note, the guy who played, not the casting guy, because it's the casting woman and her assistant, but the guy who leads her into the audition. It's like a producer. Is that the guy from Poltergeist? Is that the boss from Poltergeist who built the houses over the stones oh okay. could be i, I think it's like i should have looked it up long, why don't you just look that? it up he has that great moment in poltergeist where I craig mean, t I've, nelson's yelling at him yeah i'm sorry i'm just like there's so many people in this movie like billy ray cyrus <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah. you guys so billy yeah, ray dude. cyrus would go on like <laughs> did you guys watch Han- are you, did you guys watch hannah montana no, I did a not. little bit okay I dabbled well I billy ray only Five years later, you guys, he would go on to do Hannah Montana. What a career. He's got a good agent. What a life. <laughs> it's what so a life. funny. Oh, also, it is it is the guy from Poltergeist. Sorry. There you go. Excellent. But I never realized how close this was to Hannah Montana. Because I grew up on Hannah Montana. Totally. I never realized that it was only five years later he would do Hannah Montana, yeah. which is hilarious. But that, that moment where she goes to the audition, 
such a good scene. Like I'm obsessed with that scene. So I'm obsessed with oh, yeah. after that scene when they walk out yeah. and the casting director's like, God, that was awful. Wow. <laughs> and they're all celebrating inside. All the men are like, oh shit, that was terrific. Yeah. It's so good. So do you know that clip? Have you seen I because I went down a rabbit hole of watching clips from uh, the Dick Cavett show from the no. 70s. Right, right there with And you. there's that classic moment where Lily Tomlin walks off because there's this guy she's talking to and he's like he's talking about the things he owns like the animals he owns he's like yeah. and the most beautiful animal i own is my wife and then yeah. lily tomlin's oh, like God. you own and she gets up and walks out yeah. that guy is the guy that she has the scene with oh she's like, my god <laughs> kissing wow wow perfection then yeah. that's so good can we let's talk about naomi watts a little bit yeah, yeah. please because it's that's her big scene, break huh this yeah is her big this break. is her big break that scene is incredible her i mean she's incredible in the whole movie but i just She's so funny in the first half of this movie, you guys. Oh, She's uh, really made me laugh so, so much. I don't think I laughed that much the first time I watched this. And Because you didn't know what to expect, maybe. Maybe. And this time around, I'm like, this is hilarious. She's playing it so, so well. And it's it's the way it's written, too. Is the, the leave it to beaver half. attitude. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Coco. That was almost my favorite sound. Yeah. <laughs> she says, call me Coco. And she's like, okay, Coco. I love yeah. it. It's you would love cute. Twin Peaks, honestly. I know. Because it's to a lot of it. that. And then when she's on the phone and she goes, what did she say? I wrote it down. She goes, I'm calling about, I'm inquiring about. Yeah, yeah it makes it really thinks. obvious. <laughs> it's so funny. And then yeah. her phone call with Aunt Ruth when she's like, like a proper actress, I'll take it out in the courtyard with a cup of coffee. Oh, so good. There was also a moment when they were rehearsing lines and she's like, you're really good. She's like, she takes a fake puff on an invisible cigarette and it's yeah. like, oh, thank yeah. you, darling. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm calling exactly. it right now that that's your favorite sound. No. Thank you, darling. Oh, okay. It was really, it was almost that. okay, Coco. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, what a performance. No, she's excellent. She plays like such a range in this. Such well, a range. So it's important to like Lynch has that like some people think he's a bad director because a lot of his films have this very affected G whiz leave it to beaver thing going on. I think part of that is because that's the world he comes from. But also like it, I think it's so intentional because obviously so like people get real. The characters get real when he wants them to. Exactly. Yeah. And like because Twin Peaks like has had that criticism Blue Velvet. But all those films are like parodies of this like exactly. small town aw shucks exactly. kind of thing yeah. a lot of people don't seem to pick up on that or they're like yeah. he's and, just not a good director and the dialogue in the first half is very much like an old movie and I think that's intentional if we're talking yeah. about this whole like that's Diane's dream yeah she's dreaming in the form of a movie oh, uh, no absolutely like her whole what you're talking about the sunny entrance to yeah. you know like oh my god the and escalator. it's like Los Angeles I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I've lived here long enough that now I'm like mm. Oh, honey, <laughs> I have never felt that yeah, way. Right? I was born you were born here. here. Yeah, I mean, that's but just it. It's, it's like so funny. What you're, what you're saying about it being funny yeah. in the way that I think um, Jack Torrance is very funny right. at the beginning of The Shining because you know right. this is going to go so right. bad. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the way she's like clutching the old lady and it's like, we're here. That's oh, me yeah. going, that escalator is me riding up to AMC Burbank. <laughs> that's, that's the equivalent. I'm like all excited. Well, that you should be. <laughs> Next that's to the Batman statue. Magic you? happens. Oh yeah, exactly. Giant the, Batman the statue. The Batman statue. You can still get Pinkberry over there. <laughs> yeah. It's a magical place. It really. I is. see everything with a slightly hazy uh, glow tone, yeah. just like the fir- the, the dream sequence. The Barney's Beanery there is like my version of Cheers. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They yeah. do this like faux street fair there now too. Yeah. Have you guys been there recently? Oh, no, I know. Like on the actually. weekends, there's like all these vendors set there's up with vendors. tents, and they're trying to give it like a vibe. I'm like, guys, this is the Burbank. Like, You're AMC. trying too hard. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. But then when she does the audition scene, you guys, because yes. it's so funny because she's doing yeah. Leave It to Beaver, and then she does the audition scene, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And then she goes back to Leave It to Beaver, and then of course there's the ending. Well, so I, I mean, I think Chelsea, what you were saying about duality and like yeah. Yeah. the idea that we we don't expect someone who's gee whiz, golly, to have the depth, right? Yeah, that she shows, or even to yeah like, be lesbian. I mean, oh not, yeah, like, no, exactly. Yeah, it's just like yeah. I. Uh, yeah, I think her, it's like this weird exhilaration she's getting. Yeah. 
from every moment of this new life. Yeah, like, exactly. If we're seeing it like it's just this true dream sequence, and yeah, it is all happy go lucky. She would fucking nail that audition yeah. scene. Yeah. She yeah. would do the perfect audition she scene. Would. Yeah. She would do it all. all and she would all be up. taken to go meet a director. Exactly. Yeah. And if she couldn't get the role, it would have to be a conspiracy. It would have <laughs> to be all this exactly. shit. There has to be all this nefarious shit, and not just that she got like. And not not just like potentially one interpretation being just the sad reality that she got fucked. And yeah. she wasn't right. actually yeah. maybe that good. That good. Yeah. And a jury contest isn't an acting audition. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's the yeah, versus the No, she was Aww. good. And there is all that there's just all this other ev- crazy evil exactly. shit going on and a guy in a cowboy hat and a <laughs> the oh, cowboy's yeah. so funny. I love the cowboy. Yeah, I love the cowboy too. Before we talk more about the cowboy, oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to say that it's so interesting that she made Camilla Rhodes, like if we're thinking this this like yeah. story, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Camilla Rhodes got the role instead of her, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So in the dream in the first half, Camilla Rhodes is played by that woman who she's jealous of, who like kisses the real Camilla. Right. And not yes. actual Camilla, who's like the femme fatale of the right. story. Right. I don't it's so cool. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I just you know what's interesting. Like she made the evil person who got the role this woman that she's jealous of. Yes. No, no, that rather it, than it, it was it, actually that fully her lover. makes sense. And sorry, I'm no, sorry. Please, take, take it. But just also to it jumping off that you bring up an idea I was thinking of, which is, you know, who's to say that the second half isn't also the dream slash right. what is real. Mm. And how realistic is it that she would get in cahoots with this lady so quick, right. you know, with Camilla and then and then get burned? And then why would there be such a torture? Like, why would she get invited, like get sent a car to go up the hill to go to this basically humiliation fest? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, it's hard, you know, Maybe that, they that were is never also, sleeping together. that is also a, a possibility. Why why would there be such cruelty? Like, why would there be an expense paid towards that that cruelty yeah. against her in that mm-hmm. way? So it's 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 cartoonish in a yeah, different direction. Right. You brought up a good point. Is what no, I want to say. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're right. Everything you said makes total sense. Very the cowboy. Oh, I, 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 thought, I thought we were out of that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, cowboy. I, I, no, 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 I, no. I mean, I, I wish I had like written down specifically the lines he says because there's not that <laughs> it's many. So funny. But there's just something very satisfying about watching that guy cut this like very self assured asshole like stereotypical director guy, a guy yeah. we've all had to work for or with, and yeah. people, like who's just every the fact that he. Used a golf club as his choice of weapon. Yeah. I don't, you know, like just like fuck you, dude. Like, why I did he that. have that golf club with him? Because he golfs. He has golfs, and he's why got the. Why would he just take one club with him to a meeting? Uh, I don't. I think there would might have been a bag, but I don't. We didn't see there, it. We didn't see it. I didn't see it. We didn't see it. I like yeah. the idea of that. Just, just expressing how in, how ineffectual he is. The idea that he is that. Uh, like imp- like he couldn't defend himself and then he gets cucked and then he doesn't know how to, <laughs> how to advocate for it. Like if this is all through Diane's dream sequence and she like, let's assume she fucking hates this guy <laughs> and just wants to look at him get humiliated. Look at this loser yeah. getting cheated. Look at this guy getting, getting uh, threatened, you know, uh, by a re- like by a real masculine figure, so I guess yeah. I just, no, actually, that's a really good it's, point. Uh, yeah. it's an idea. Right. It's also, I just yeah, I love the idea. You'll see me once if you did good, yeah. twice yeah. if you didn't, and then we do that. Is but then we do see that him. little like. <gasps> so what does that mean? Oh, like, I never thought about. I know. That. Is he talking just? I think is he you talking know, to he's us. talking to us. Yeah, I think uh, he's uh, talking yeah. To us. yeah. But what are his so, conditions? Yeah. If you see me once, it means you, you did, did well. good. It but means if you, you did see good. me twice, you did bad, and you see him two more times. Yeah, you see him two more times well, because he wakes it's up. Party. He wakes her up. He's like, "Pretty girl, it's time, time to, to go. wake up." And then, and he's then also he's in at the, the background. You, he passes yes. through the background. Yeah, oh. I do think it's funny. I will say, speaking of humor, this is maybe not a thing to laugh at, but when he is like, "Pretty girl, time to wake up." And he sees you get a shot of her, and she looks more corpse-like, and he just like shuts the door. Oh, <laughs> He's like, "Not my monkeys, not my circus." <laughs> like, just oh my yeah, God, just rewatch. So it it kind of yeah it reminded me of Succession. No, that's 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 great. That's um, funny. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's something about that cowboy that's just I love that great role. Yeah. You're and, too busy being a smart Alec. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. and like as much as I hate people who say that kind of thing, like smart Alec, you know, I hate that phrase. <laughs> Because it's been lobbed at me, um, but I, I really think there was something. Um, 
Yeah, the way he's cut down to size by a cowboy. Like all the, all the, the threatening and the gangsters is kind of yeah. like just background noise. But this weird guy coming out of the darkness is more unsettling than like anything else. It's funny to me though. Yeah. Like you say oh. the word oh, no, unsettling, it's but yeah. it's hilarious. I think you've you got the right takeaway there. Because it's, yeah. so, it's so absurd. It's absurd, exactly. It's yeah. total absurd. But he makes it like yeah. believable in the way, like he has, has a dream believable? logic. Yeah. He has a dream logic. logic. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, it doesn't like fill me full of dread or anything, right. but, but it, I don't know. I, it's amusing. I of think course. I would say that. I think, I think it's, it's an amusing. Yeah, it feels scene. absurd enough with uh uh for me like watching it just like it is a tertiary enough character. I'm like mm-hmm. I'm not I don't I don't give that much of a shit if it gets carnal right now, but mm-hmm. like were we like I was always the most tense cuz I I cared the most about the women, so like right. in that situation it it is kind of like what are you going to do? What are you going yeah. to yeah. What's going on? Yeah. But I love how Adam is aware like even when he's in the meeting with the two mobsters and he's just like scene. what is going on yeah. here excuse me it's my and movie same it's with the so cowboy. he's ineffectual he has my like power cowboy am yeah. i gonna wear my ted gal <laughs> i mean he does he goes so hard on all those jokes like to the point where even his like assistant is like okay funny guy he did yeah. give him a she did if, if it is her dream she did at least make him funny she gave him a yeah, lot it's true well, and see that's the thing too is like i know we think of this as the, the women's movie but and, and everything is like tied to them, but it is interesting how there are all these scenes and plots and people yeah. that we don't really ever get more of, and that's fine. Yeah, but, I, but they're part of the world. Yeah, no, exactly. You touched on it. I think too, it's probably for the pilot, right? He's kind of setting up different threads, but as a film, what they end up doing, all these threads that don't really pay off, it just adds to the texture of yes. the dream. The, logic. the dream. Yes. The dream. L. A. as a and dreamscape. It, yeah, and... you you bringing up that it could have been a good like that is a good point that. It is the texture of Twin Peaks that makes Twin Peaks, yeah. right? You know, it's not about who actually killed Laura Palmer. It's about everything around. Mm-hmm. It's what she represents. And then the idea of, like, he he tra- he, he moves that to L.A. Like, mm. all right, it could have been a really good show, actually. Right. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. know? Yeah. Is, there sta- is there a stable at the top of Beachwood Canyon? I don't even know. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I don't know. believe it. And I, I, believe it too. I know you brought up Mulholland Drive earlier, like the, the physical place. And I know David Lynch has a house on, like that's Does where he, he yeah. lives on Mulholland really? Drive. Um, but there, yeah, I totally hear what you're saying about that road being... It's glamorous and treacherous. It, it, is, the, it is the road. Right. It's like the road in Los Angeles yeah. because if you're at the right place, you can look down over the valley and see it. You can see the ocean. You can see the other side of the city. Right. Um, and then just, I don't know, I got, when I first moved here, I read about William Mulholland, who mm-hmm. that is named for, and the guy who brought water to LA. And right. it's just, I think there's something like, again, this, this is such a, like Los Angeles is fully the DNA. Like there is nothing else in here. Like it, it's just, even Winkies, it's like, God, yeah. Bob's big boy. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't just shoot there. <laughs> I yeah. know, right? I'm surprised, yeah, he, I'm surprised he didn't shoot at the Johnny's over by right. over by you. Oh, uh, the, yeah. There's that place, too. I mean, it's just, but that's just it, right? Like, there's all these kind of, like, not quite great diners or sort of family, like, they've been around for decades and everyone yeah. knows and somehow they have that tableau. The texture. I Definitely. mean, it's, it's yeah. all the texture. And I'm even like, you wanted to come to Winkies? Great like, point. This Winkies. This, <laughs> <Yeah>. this Winkies. <laughs> Well, cause, yeah, because I think he got that because he, you know, famously went to Bob's for every day for like 10 years for lunch and ordered the same thing yeah. and took all of his cast meetings there. And people are probably like, he probably had years of people telling him, Bob's like, really? OK, yeah, sure. What did he order? I don't know. <laughs> I would like to know the answer to that. Um, I think, yeah, could write tuna in. sandwich or something. I think yeah. it was tuna. Tuna. Yeah, t- diner wow. is so classic Hollywood. It's a great thing really you guys is. are bringing up, too. And I think, like, Quentin was obsessed with House of Pies. And, like, it's very... Wait, is Quentin obsessed with House of well, Pies? Well, he was. That's what, like, like uh, Pulp Fiction, like, drafting oh my God. and all that. He was very, he was very much part of that. And then yeah. I... I know for others like Fred sixty two at, at different points was a was a little bit of a like a muse yeah. of sorts a muse set people and certainly uh, Pan's Diner yeah. has been the location Pans. and said I love that Googie style yeah. like we have a lot of yeah the the diner culture is strong and that's what I mean yeah. like there's just every element mm-hmm. of this is authentically mm-hmm. or feels authentically like Los Angeles and yeah. not just I in totally its present agree. but like in its history. And I mean, um, one detail I want to bring up is the, and I'm going to call her the Banshee, um, but it was, it, her name was Louise. She was the woman who comes and knocks on the door. Mm. And says, Somebody's yes. in trouble. Yeah. That's She's Lee blind, Grant. Right? 
Oh, Lee Grant, Grant, who was blacklisted, like when she was nineteen or twenty. You guys are bringing up so many what? great <laughs> Easter eggs. <laughs> like it just it just adds to like like I like fuck the list of clues. Like this is just this is just L A. Like it's just a mood piece that's on L A. I mean. And if I that's mean, all you take away, yeah. I mean, like right. I, I think like, that's how I'm going to tell people about it from now on. Yeah, like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I mean, one of the <laughs> three great LA films, probably, yeah. if not well, number we're, we're, one, maybe. You're even thinking like Chinatown and probably Chinatown and like I'm a big fan. Of, oh, Sunset Boulevard, which is yeah. bring up yes. Sunset Boulevard. Lynch is a, a big a fan of that up. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Such yeah. a good movie. It's and also, so just good. the fact that like that's named Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. This is Mulholland called Mulholland Drive. Drive. Yes. Oh, that, I think that's it. He's not that a great big pan up. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, the, the street sign. Yeah. And those are those are good movies too. Both both Chinatown and Sunset thematically yeah. tying to this like especially Sunset of a woman driven mad yes. with the I, with totally. the idea of herself and her relation to the town, and then also that nefarious quality of the, the underbelly of it, right. and that same with Chinatown yeah. too. Oh yeah. Right. And the the. It's, it's like massive power that you can't fight against. Exactly. Like corruption. Yeah. There is this exactly. entity that's so beyond you. Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen Day of the Locust? I have not. I have not. That one is it some. On it manages to be the the bleakest of all of the Hollywood <laughs> stories. Like oh, yeah. even this times two. Honestly. Wow. <laughs> like, is that based? That's based off a book. Right? Yeah, it's, it's based Nathaniel... on a book. I haven't. Read, yeah, Nathaniel West. Yes. Yes. You know what? I have the book, which I've also not read, but I have as part of. So I read like a, f- a couple of his stuff. Yeah, it's I could I could see that being right. The yeah. movie is well, incredible. It's Karen yeah. Black, Donald Sutherland, yeah. and it's John Schlesinger. I think it was his follow up to Midnight Cowboy. Oh, or shit. He, yeah, okay. maybe a couple movies after Midnight yeah, Cowboy. Still, but like, though. yeah, it's no. really fatalistic. I don't want to stir the pot too much, but I know Chelsea, you love Babylon, right? Um, you know what? I actually I do, and uh, please, please feel free to look. I uh, <laughs> well, you mentioned Underbelly. I mentioned think I think everything we're talking about I, about the death of the Hollywood dream, and I all will that. say I it hit it hit me, and I watched it at the right time. It hit me in a great way. I love I I got everything Damien Chazelle was putting down. And I was there for it. Great. That being said, is it as competent? In expressing, I think that duality that this film is doing, no, right. I just, I, but I, I love it because Babylon to me is just like it is just a, it is an, it's an opera of a, like it is very much like Rent wishes it was Babylon in that sense. You know what <laughs> I mean? And, well, yeah, because I think I think in, in, in terms of structure, it feels very La Boheme. If you, you know, if you, I don't know if you you've, oh, you watched yeah. Babylon, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand the dismay of that. You know, I get it. I think um, I would not be surprised that he would be a, potentially a, a big David Lynch fan. I think right. that there there are certain right. images he's very much a a fan of and paying homage to. And um, I do, but I do think that Mulholland Drive is it it really drives that point home. And, you know, in a bit more of a somber way or in a bit totally. more of a, uh, you know, darkened way. Um, yeah, no, of course. And that was the yeah. main criticism of Babylon was just that it's too beautiful to do what this it's movie It's interesting does. you say too it's beautiful. Like, I've heard the opposite of it's too crass. You know, you open like, on an elephant cra- taking a shit. You're making crass, a choice. But it's also yeah. like, like opulent? it ends with him crying at oh, right. in the rain. Oh, yeah. And it's you get very all clearly 2001 and, like, Space Odyssey yeah, like s- signaling and... I anyway. understand the yeah, but I thought when you said underbelly, I, like it, it just clicked. Yeah, the armpit of Los Angeles. Oh, totally. <laughs> I know that's. I think you're very, you're, you're very valid. Like, well, I, I think, think it's, it's interesting yeah. to note too that like David Lynch is not necessarily like a big film fan. He's not like a cinephile, and his reference for stuff, which I think why he feels so original, he's not calling on a bunch of stuff that he's seen that's from so back true. in the day. I know he is a fan of Sunset Boulevard, so you can feel that sort of in this movie, but. Uh, virtually, you know, like not what it ninety five percent of filmmakers working today are inspired by Lynch in some way, and the way that people that are in a Lynch film, every director they work with afterwards, just ask them about Lynch. They're like, "What wow. was that like?" And just you know, t- obviously, you guys that, in Twin yeah. Peaks changed everything. Like. Yeah. The David Lynch influence. And yeah. I think that speaks to why this film is on the list, too. Of just like yeah. it is his it one of his most them. complete yeah. and yeah. accessible films. It's, it's everything around them, not just them. Totally. Like it's that meta quality. Yeah, that totally. Although I got to say, I think my favorite David Lynch is actually The Elephant Man. 
great I movie. Have, I seen haven't it. seen it. It's either. so good. It's still a David Lynch movie. It is. But it's set in Victorian England if it's and it's amazing. Somewhere. And that's Anthony Hopkins. Down. I'm down. It's so down it is too. so good. It is like such a beautiful testament to like the human so spirit. It, does it, look it is sad. It is sad, but it's so it's fucking beautifully good. Beautifully done. And, and, and well, Anne Bancroft well is great. Oh, I like, love her. Yeah. She's, oh, and uh, Anthony Hopkins, right? Yeah. 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 And fun fact about that movie is that um his name doesn't appear in a credits, but but Mel Brooks produced it. Yep. Wow. Interesting. Because he saw a racer head and it was like, oh, yeah. this kid. But and is and yeah. do you know what Mel Brooks said about David Lynch? He sounds like Jimmy Stewart if he was a Martian. Or <laughs> oh Jimmy Stewart from Mars. <laughs> I was gonna say when you're like you couldn't do the impression, I was like, he just sounds like somebody's always shouting over like a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> like it's okay. like then it's a little nasal. Now. It's Friday. <laughs> and we're listening. Exactly. You're you know that sounds I very love him. Naomi. There, you, Naomi. You crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> you crushed it. That's all we needed. Uh, wow. That's funny. Um, yeah. Well, talk about some of the ways that he, I mean, the way, so it's funny, Peter Deming, who's the DP on this, I think his first home with Lynch was Lost Highway. I could be wrong, but he's used him every time since. I don't know if he was on Inland Empire, which I actually rewatched. Have you guys seen Inland Empire? This one I haven't seen. Only bits of it like i tried to start it at one point i think it was too high and i got scared <laughs> oh yeah it like, like, there's the yeah. imagery it got really scary for me yeah i think that's part of what mulholland drivers like it's scary but i again i watched it in the middle of the day yeah i was i was i was I, I hadn't i was not cool enough to have access to drugs at the age that i watched it so i was of, of sound <laughs> too body sober. and mind <laughs> yeah exactly whereas with inland empire i think i got like way too fucking scared way too fast yeah. watching it i don't know that one like, too it's it's just not like an audience friendly movie sure and i watched that earlier this week i hadn't seen it since like since the, the theater i don't know yeah. but like watching mulholland drive after that like mulholland drives like butter it's just like <laughs> it's yeah butter. like butter but i was gonna say like so yeah peter deming's the dp who uh shot austin powers the oh, same dp yeah. of austin powers as <laughs> david lynch's all, all of them or? i think he at least did the first one he might have done the first First two. two. Those ones are great. Those, Those first two um, are great. But the <laughs> ways that Lynch kind of offset, like the, the Lynch touches, because it's not like the visual look of his movies is that radical. Like, yeah, you get, mm -hmm. you were talking about with like the flashes of white. Like he does the strobe light a lot. He does like the red curtains. And then he yeah. does like the flashes of Naomi Watts with the older they couple. They almost feel like, low tech in a way. Yeah. yeah. Like those first few shots of Mulholland Drive do feel oh, a little so bit like. With yeah. the jitterbug. Yeah. Like the yeah. Jitterbug. Exactly. It's the like jitterbug. A, it's and a then weird that, comp shot. The shaky POV into the pillow. And then that dissolve of Mulholland. Yeah. And the, again, I'm like, just, I'm cheating. I just like rewatched that opening bit there. But it does feel like. Uh, totally yeah well yeah. especially wait, did grade. you guys see the newest season of twin peaks yes. the yes. return mm -hmm. that was a spent like the some of the the computer effects in that were like very low tech yeah. like or just like it looked like it cost five bucks and at first i was yeah. so thrown off by it but i'm like oh that's I just like your thing i see him being like we're not let's not let's not let's not overly gild this they'll get it yeah like, exactly they'll get, they'll, they'll get or they won't it's not yeah. like and i've know. heard um i know lynch doesn't often talk about his movies which like you know good call <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah just for any director honestly but um I, I've heard him speak, though, about his fascination with darkness and the idea of darkness being non-existence and that we all emerge from darkness at some point. And so and uh, there's like other stories that I, he tells about this. But um, I guess when he was really young um, and he grew up in and I believe in Idaho, because he's definitely like a. I mean, I that's, that's so. it was definitely a small town, small yeah. town vibe. But um, he said sometime in the night he said in our neighborhood back then, the street lamps weren't very bright. They didn't light everything. And he was walking home from a friend's house and uh, a naked woman emerged out of the dark. Right. That's where Blue Velvet came from. Exactly. Yeah. <gasps> and wow. I mean, there's there's like more to that story. Like, that oh, just it, explains so yeah. much about him. Being a young, young boy and just like being totally confused. In about, like what, the 50s, 60s? Yeah, exactly. 50s. Yeah. Did he grow up? Yeah. 50s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's I pretty wild. That. Yeah, because he did grow up in this very all-American sort of small town thing, and he was like, I mean, you see old pictures of him as a kid, and he just looks like some oh, yeah. like '50s kid. Yeah. But he yeah. was like starting to do these weird paintings, and he was interested in like dead animals and stuff like that. Yeah. But just in the way, um, to uh, Michael J. Anderson, who plays the the small man from Twin Peaks, is here. Yeah. But he's in this prosthetic suit. To, it's like this full-bodied suit. So they're just using his head to just yeah. kind of give that. He's sitting in the chair. Yeah. 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 Um, just to give it this weird sort of not quite right quality. Yeah, and he, was, he loves the spotlights. Was... and Yeah. Yeah. And like, again, the curtains. And, yep. and um, sometimes like just a piece of furniture that's by itself and just being by itself seems 
stark and eerie. Right. Yeah. You know, like. Well, I remember hearing, uh, I think Laura Dern was being interviewed about Wild at Heart. And she was like, yeah, we were filming. And then David would just cut. And he'd be like, hold on. This corner needs like a desk. And then he would literally take 20 minutes and like build a desk. Because he's very crafty. Yeah. And he would just like build a desk. And then it would be there. And be like, okay. And then they would continue shooting. So it was like. Right. Fern and all that stuff is like so I just saw important. some tweet about this like that yeah. um they he wanted there to be in a scene in Twin Peaks two ashtrays full of cigarettes to signify Laura Palmer's duality and there was only one so he paused filming to smoke an entire pack of cigarettes <laughs> to fill the ashtray yeah, I love that <laughs> I didn't realize I had this many stories about David. Yeah, Lee. Like, <laughs> this, this is fun to listen just on these these details you guys are well, sharing. I mean, to... I don't have all of it, but you know, we all well, have something. Well, just right. it kind of adds to like it helps sort of like I think it better. Should it be as ranked as high as it is? I don't. I have not seen all of the movies to say, but I can I can better appreciate the like the respect of oh, that. Just all yeah. the, the, the 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 details mm. and the intentionality and like totally. it's, it's, it's the love. Love. The love of the craft. I you, love that. You know one detail I really love? I love the detail when uh, Mark Pellegrino, is he's the hitman, and he mm. kills the guy with the book, right? Oh God, we haven't even talked and about the, this. And the guy's dead on the desk, and there's that yeah. one hair. There's the hairs oh, that are, like, gelled that are yeah. sticking out to the side. And it's just, like, on purpose. Everything's on purpose. Yeah, you know? it's just a great little lynch touch of, yeah. like, what is that? We don't know. It's so funny when he comes <laughs> in and he's, like, just doing some stuff for this guy. Yeah. Uh, and then the guy's, like, and are you making ends meet? And he's, like, hardly i'm like oh that's an assistant like that's yeah me. oh yeah, yeah. it's everybody <laughs> everybody yeah. in la is doing Just some stuff doing for some, some guy stuff for yeah. this yeah. guy no that scene is like at first i forgot how that scene went <laughs> it's like yeah. almost a coen brothers oh my God. it kind of is, is coen brothers yeah. Yeah. it is yeah. it's so funny the woman screaming as he's like dragging her down bit. the hallway yeah, oh, yeah. Something, something bit me bit real me bad, bad. <laughs> i really felt though for the the custodian i know he didn't deserve any Although he was a little inactive, I gotta say. Yeah. yeah. No, that's I mean, there's so many. If, if we had the series, we would get a whole we lot would. of yes. the custodian, probably. Oh, and that guy. I mean, who? He was in Big Lebowski. Yes. Right? He's one Where's of the. Where's the money, Lebowski? Yeah. That's him. Hey, yeah. Woo. Yeah. Is this guy supposed to be rich or something? Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a really good realize. connection between, yeah. the, between the Coen brothers and this. I think the Lebowski's too. another very LA movie. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. LA movie. yeah, it is. Like, it is. And I guess there's a movie called Double Indemnity. That we- <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, just yeah. a little yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many great. Yeah. The Long Goodbye. There's, there's too, honestly, too many, too many to there's name. Too many. Yeah. But, um, there you go. LA loves to play itself. I, yeah. It's so, so true. I love, I love the motifs that Lynch has with like gangsters, hitmen, thugs, goons. He's obsessed with these like noir tropes. They pop yeah. up in so many films. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey, I'm the tough guy, and I'm wearing a leather jacket. And it's like making a call and it's like she's still missing and then yeah. making another call and then another yeah. phone like rings. Robert Loggia in Lost Highway yes <laughs> I love him in that when he like goes after those people for tailgating yes the goon that comes to the house, like Adam's house. Oh, and that yeah. woman like she swinging hurt, off of him. His wife. I, mean, I don't like yeah. that he hits her, but it is funny the way she throws her whole body He's on him and he just is still big. unaffected. Like yeah. he is tall and like, I don't know. Yeah. He's just a large man. And you got Dan Hedaya, who's one of the ultimate oh, goons in I, cinema I history, know. just in general. I love Dan. And the scene, the guy that's so spit- intentional, like the choices made to, yeah. to yeah. And he's also past. a Cohen guy he's in uh, Blood Simple. Yeah. yeah, he is. But and- Clueless, and cl- I was most importantly, say. Clueless. He's the best. He's the dad, Clueless. right? Yeah. 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 Oh yes. Um, the best dad there yes. ever was. No. The guy that spits out the espresso is Angelo Badalamenti. Yes, I he did is? not know that until I this didn't watch. Know that. Yeah. Um, and I gotta say, I don't think he so much spits it out as he opens his <laughs> mouth and, and allows yeah. it to fall out. fall out. I remember when I first saw this in high school. That really disturbed me yeah. <laughs> for yeah. some unspeakable reason because they come in and the guy starts shaking well i mean yeah. like clearly the whole negotiation is resting on that the cost being is right so. and, and while that does yeah. seem it is absurd i'm like but have you read people's writers yeah like yeah. like that they have to have the certain thing in the specific like that right. now that no longer seems outrageously no. realistic yeah. to it me doesn't, yeah. it doesn't like, it's so it's so real like it's so true just the way things are just decided like just like hairpin uh impulsive totally. petty uh yeah just, just stuff like that just yeah. like yeah I, I just don't like i don't like the look that person gave me 
we're going to blacklist them. Like, it's just yeah. like, ah, I don't like the way this coffee tastes. I don't we're like Coke run... Zero. I, I only like Diet Coke. Yeah, I, don't, I only like Diet Coke. <laughs> it's funny. This There's guy that... brought me Coke Zero. He's fired. <laughs> from the set immediately. I don't want to see him again. Yeah. Is, yeah. So true. There's a line in here when she's leaving for her audition just to show like how childish Naomi Watts is. She's like, don't drink all the Coke. She says yeah. that <laughs> to Betty. <laughs> Like that's what she yeah. could think of as she was leaving. Don't Why drink all the coke. Don't drink all the coke. It's so funny. It's almost are you, ha- can you like yeah yeah. Just, Did it, anyone else just because living in L.A. like before I lived in L.A. Scientology was not on my radar at all. Mm. Since obviously um, my last apartment was literally feet away from the yes. big blue building, the big monstrosity on Fountain, but. Does anyone else get a Scientology vibe from this in the sense like she's the girl? Like Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. Like this yeah. mysterious shadow organization is just like she's the girl. I mean, that's still very much a thing that yeah. you say however you feel or think about the the actual relationship of Scientology in Hollywood. Like there right. is Again, there's the you know, you could justify it like again, this is all just in the just how did the the dream, the Diane Betty dream, she's trying to justify wrongdoings against her. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to be like, oh, there like just there's this conspiracy against me. But there is that real sort of unspoken how how real is that uh, yeah, that, right. that undercurrent going? I mean, and it's like you know? pick pick your pick your group that wants to throw its weight around. You know, it's whoever's in in power, whether that be you know, you know whether it's it's Scientology or it's the mob or you know yeah. this studio um, or or just the corrupt government itself. You yeah. know, it does feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I love a movie that about crumbling institutions. Yeah. <laughs> now, where does the money come from, and where does it travel to? Right. right. Yeah. To Babylon for a second. <laughs> no, just the, you know, I think that it's follow uh, the money. Yeah. The the idea of like where. The connections that that the, the how how dirty can it get? Yeah. How involved can right. that Pretty dirty. can right. can the how threatening can that involvement be? Yeah. Uh, to what point? Yeah. Yeah. Um. One moment I love. Did we talk about this when um Rita is reading against Betty? Like Betty's getting yeah. ready. Oh, for she's her like audition. intentionally bad. Yeah. Like it's she's, so funny. Yeah. She's so I stilted. love that. It's so good. Something that um, I, is, I want to say I never noticed before, but bothered me this time is that pinching pink cardigan. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it doesn't fit. It does. It's all it doesn't fit. Out. But I feel like that was the look in the two thousands. It, you might be right. I might I might be like pushing that out of my memory. Um, because but it's she, funny that it does. It's ill fitting. Like almost like yeah, it doesn't belong. Like she doesn't belong. Like it she doesn't. doesn't belong. Yeah. Like she's, she doesn't she's belong. She's cosplaying in a role that isn't suited yes. for her. Yes, exactly, exactly. Even, and even the necklace was like it looked like a Claire's little. <laughs> just it was yeah. just definition <laughs> innocence, blonde, yes. pink, and all yes. the, the rhinestones. The way they shined the, the, the filter and the lighting they're already using just makes it add to this whole like it, it's an unreal quality. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. un, it's not grounded. This is she, not a grounded person i mean she doesn't question a woman in the house not at all and she's just like i'm betty by the way like i'll let you finish your it's shower it's like a sitcom yeah it, yeah. Totally, yeah. it, it definitely feels like yeah the exaggeration of that that tr- and speaking as someone from the midwest that tr- very trusting <laughs> yeah like well what why why we don't need to do that like why yeah. would we need to do that why would we need to call but the then police? also maybe she's like there's a hot woman in my house. That's yeah. also true. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the subconscious and the dream being like, yeah. we're gonna, you know, we're gonna follow through on this fantasy <laughs> sequence, yes, aren't we? we? Are, yeah. I mean, and I gotta say, like, there's a lot of poor eroticism in films. Yeah, uh, I think it works pretty well in this. Though. Oh, yeah. I like, agree. That scene is very breathy. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely yeah. agree. He does those well. He does them well. I mean, it doesn't feel exploitative though. Yeah. You know, it's like it really doesn't. It, it, and it's so like also and not to be all you know Hollywood history but you know the idea of like chorus girls coming to town and like sharing apartments there were lots of like yeah. same sex relationships going on yeah. because the comfort of that was so much safer than any of this horrible shit that's being thrown at you outside yeah. in the world no so. I think that's rel- like you go Hollywood hit that, that's what this is mm-hmm. for this is the movie to do it on I think that's you bring up a good point with that I think that mm-hmm. the 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 comfort and softness and safety yes. it's not exploited but more so just like uh, celebrated and lamented and mm-hmm. how he's he's depicting it it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the, the way that that lynch uh i think honors women in his works mm-hmm. as opposed yeah. to you know he, he definitely a good looking woman he'll let you he'll let you know they're good looking <laughs> yes you know 
he'll let you know someone's stacked, but also it's not to the point of like where like leering where, yeah, not a yeah. leering. It's more sort of like, okay, well this is going to serve in some capacity to, you know, right. to add some depth later or to context. And then I think about like, um, oh gosh, the name just escaped my brain. Um, Pedro Almodovar mm. mm-hmm. and the way that there's a, there's a, a reverence without a, yeah, like without creepy getting, eye. yeah, yeah, exactly. Without getting a, yeah, a sleazy, creepy eye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, women are human beings too. It's yeah. so funny, you guys. The movie I watched before this, and I, I didn't even know that there were lesbians in it, was The Handmaiden. Okay. By uh, Park Chan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen that either. I have no idea. And I'm sorry I just killed it because it okay. isn't it isn't clear like when you start the movie. Wow, and then it was Jackie. this. And I was just like, wow. Spoilers like, for Handmaiden. Yeah. Ding, ding, no. no. I'm no, no, sorry. No, I mean, no, not at all. I mean, I've seen but That's that. another movie that's very yeah. like. I look forward to seeing Dreamy. It's great. Yeah, it uh, I mean, so, yeah, it's dreamy, but I just mean like the woman, like the same sex relationship yeah. in that is like very I've sacred. Seen, I've seen one scene. Yeah. So I, it that doesn't surprise me so much when you say that because she talks right. about it, dressing her up like a doll. Yeah. And it's very. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, she has it. So Betty in this film, ha- like she is basically a doll. She's she's Rita's or sorry. Rita's the doll. Mm, that yeah. Betty's just like, oh, this, this, and she literally makes yeah. her the wig and everything. Yeah. yeah, she's like a Barbie doll. Yeah. Well, the wig, and then like people talk about like persona. Right, and, and you guys just did an ep. Well, like a month or two ago, you guys did three women on your yeah. show. Three women too. Which it's a great one to bring this up. World this of like yeah. two yeah. women becoming one. Yeah, Persona, yeah. Mulholland Drive, three women all kind of get mentioned like in the same sentence. There was one sentence. big one too. Yeah, that I'm there's, missing. There's probably another one. Those are the three big. Freaky ones. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a good one. <laughs> but in this one, it's like it, in Persona. There's that very like there's that money shot right in Persona where they like become one. And then this one kind of has it too, where it's it, like, but... oh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen it yet, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Jackie. Oh, don't be so again. No, I don't I know. We should me. have that on our list, actually. It's All a right. big one, too. That's anyway, but like, right there's a time. very intentional, like, persona shot in this. Too, we can only do like... spoilers for the episode we're talking oh, about. <laughs> oh, we do. You know we spoiler I mean? all over the damn place yeah. on our spoilers show, so don't feel bad. People are so sensitive these days. I don't, I mean, at a certain point, it's just like. You're like, shit. Honestly. This Calm movie down. came out in the 60s. I can I can I can empathize in both directions. <laughs> I can yeah. too, honestly. It's too, too yeah, it's like it's too, too there, there's a point. There's a threshold <laughs> yeah. for for rationale. Yes. There's a, there's a rational there's a response threshold. on I both agree. sides. I feel like over 10 years is good. Sure. Number 15. I this is totally a digression. Please cut this out. But there's this great <laughs> moment in Frasier um where Niles has recently been divorced and he decides he's going to watch Casablanca because he's yeah. never seen it before. And basically everybody starts having an argument about the story uh-huh. in the room. And by the end, it's completely ruined for him. And he's yeah. like, why don't you just put on transfer codes and act it out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. Yeah. As you should. But Greg, the reason I brought up Persona was just that shot, Greg. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Like the oh, exiting for sure. of Diane's apartment. And it's like shaky. I wonder like, too, like, yeah. did Lynch see Persona? I, I, you can't I be certain. So. I don't know. Oh, that seems Maybe. like a, yeah, I, I think it, for him not being a, like a quote unquote movie person, like I feel like he. I think he knows this. This, this think, is right. far too Persona. Easter eggy and referential and, yeah. and reverential to not yeah. right. be uh, about LA and movies and Hollywood and, and actresses. He's the, the whole Gilda thing hangs over the movie. Do you I guys love like Gilda? That. I love that. Do you yeah. like Gilda? I yeah. love that I movie. Love Gilda. Yeah. I, I, I I, I she will love it. Sure, <laughs> you will. I've seen I've seen bits of it. I know. It's fine. No, it's totally fine. I mean, but Rita Hayworth, like, yeah, a woman who. You know, people, many people today still don't know was Latina. And like, you exactly. know, like, yeah, she was so, she, uh, she was so like reshaped and yes, reformed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She is a they representation per- of, a, of an image of an image. Yes. Exactly. Very Marilyn Monroe type yeah. of. Yeah. Absolutely. More, plus more like, insidery uh, plus Marilyn any, Monroe. Anyone symbol. who marries Orson Welles, you know, I'm, I'm curious about them. Yeah. 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 I love Rita Hayworth. I do too. <laughs> yeah. God. Pretty lady. Um, you know what? <laughs> Sorry, just as I was going through my notes, I just have one more and I realized oh I should have said it when you were talking about the diner, but um <laughs> Because you said the hobo, you you see the hobo as God. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, the hobo has the box. Right, right. And, I, and the guy from Mad Men, I'm forgetting his name. Yeah. Patrick Fischler. Yes, says he's the one that's doing it. And he even says, he goes, I have this God awful feeling. <laughs> like he says it very <laughs> intentionally, you guys. Wow. He really that's does. That's a really good one to point out. I think, I think that's a good one. I think that scene, honestly, because it's, 
That scene happens before Naomi Watts even speaks exactly. in this film. She actually doesn't get her first line until like 20 minutes in. I f- yeah. I'd forgotten. That's a great, that's a great one. You see her, too, she doesn't yeah. speak, and then it's the movie sets up all these other yeah. threads, it, and then it, you come back to her right. at the airport. It really feels very like that this is like in the mind's eye kind of thing. Like because of that, because she doesn't talk uh, initially, it does feel like this is her projecting mm. these images out. That's yeah. my... She's observing. Right. Yeah, my interpretation. Sometimes I've had I have dreams. I'm not always in the dream. I'm mm. like watching things happen around the dream, or like you're kind of uh-huh. floating above it in a sense. Yes. And it, he's just, if he's you know he says God awful. And it's like <laughs> is she like kind of the the cruel god in this in this imaginary world or realm that's yeah. controlling this. Uh, she she is a nefarious person. You know? No, I like that. I don't know. That's one way. That's I, the, I think, too, it just, like, establishes early on, like, in this L.A. of Mulholland Drive, like, anything is possible. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anything yeah. can be conjured into any back alley. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. also, if you think about it, like, if we're thinking about the dream, because when does the dream happen? And I don't think it's important the when it happens. Shot. Oh, when, like, when does her dream start? Because she sees the guy at Winkies again, Peter uh, Peter Fischler, Patrick. Patrick, how did so close? This so is so Patrick. Close. Patrick, I'm gonna write it. See, um, I just I just don't say names. <laughs> you can be like me. <laughs> you just say I the will. Winkies guy. The Winkies guy. She the uts, sees uts. him later after she talks to the hitman. He's in that same spot, right? So yeah. it's like if the dream already happened, yeah. but now she's seeing him here. When did the dream happen? It's a Mobius strip. It's yeah. just like there's yeah. no beginning and no end. I think so I think too. So too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's like she has to have had the relationship fall apart to put on the hit. But if this is the beginning of the movie, right. you know, it's like it, the snake right. is eating his own tail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a great way. I love yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <sighs> Should we do sight and sound? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, let's do it. Yeah. Yay. Do you want to start oh then, Victoria? Go okay. ahead. Yeah. I, I was just saying that um, to Chelsea, like on the way here, that, oh, this really this really affected how I watched it to, to be really focused on my senses. So I thank you. Because I think that it made me watch the movie in a totally different way. So Great. love the game. Nice. Um, my favorite site is the shot that's the point of view through tears when she's looking at the the fireplace she's masturbating oh but, god yeah. but she's but it's like the the blink that clears the the vision and then and it, it clouds and pov I yeah love it goes like out of focus and then yeah. immediately in focus yes yeah. i loved that so I much that. i was like damn that is what it's like to cry <laughs> uh, am uh, I, am save I, the sound oh, we'll okay. do sight and then we'll do sound oh, okay that's a great sight yeah, that's sight. Amazing. <laughs> um well, I mean, you know, I put the I put the Winky Scare 1656, <laughs> but then I also put um, at a particular point and and when they're when they're uh, during Jorando Jorando um, <laughs> when uh, one at uh, one fifty one forty one through six when when uh, when when Betty and Rita are crying together, yeah, oh, and it's Rita's God. crying. He she turns tw- into I love it Betty and Betty. It, like receives her but then you see her almost get this moment of like awareness on her like she's watching but she's a little more like gr- like watching watching whereas like Rita's looking for this like comfort and Betty's kind of like yeah this is I'm like she gets a little more like what is going on here like uh, yeah. she gets too aware like, I love that yeah god yeah. and that's the first mention of Jorando Jor- Jor- too that Jor- we've had this so far in this episode I know. I did all, my other, all my other keep, st- keep waiting <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Um, you know, wait, wait. So, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it later. <laughs> okay. I have two favorite sites. Um, Typical. I know. <laughs> I love, it's really early on in the movie. Uh, Rita, post-crash, mm-hmm. runs into the street, and it's this beautiful wide shot with the palm trees, and it's mm-hmm. being lit through this tree, and it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. I love that shot. And then I also love... The Winkies phone booth shot because it's incredible. It starts on the window. You yeah. know that it's Winkies, even though you don't see the sign Winkies, but you recognize the door. And then they approach. You see them approach, mm. and it pulls back. And yeah, that is it's good. a great shot. Yeah, nice. What's yours? Mine is combined sight and sound. 
<laughs> I love when that happens. I think it's just because like when I think of this movie in my head, this is always like the thing that comes to mind. It's it's during the auditions. It's 16 Reasons, the Connie Stevens song. Oh, yeah. And it starts in a close up of her singing, the, one, the actress that's, that's auditioning. Yeah. And it slowly pulls back and it looks it's like they're beautiful. in a studio. Yeah. But then you see it's a set and it's I just know. like the whole Hollywood magic. That's plus, it. Exactly. Plus the song is amazing. Exactly. I'll play it right now. Why I love you The way you hold my hand Your laughing eyes The way you understand Your secret signs They're all part of 16 reasons why Love that. I love an ambiguous shot. You know, you don't know what you're looking at Mm -hmm. till some time passes. It's catchy. It's such a good moment. And you're right. It perfectly encapsulates the movie. Connie Stevens. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, Totally. Plus, what a great little song. Just count to 16. That's the song. Oh, I love back those songs of that era where all you had to do was just like (laughs) write a song about the clock. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like writes itself. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I guess, I, I don't know. Like, they're lyrically, all the songs from that era, like, doo are lyrically, like, really dumb. They're very but, like, garbage. But... I'm so upset. Obs- like, that is, like, my favorite kind of music yeah, yeah. on Even the your, planet. Your Rondo, you know, is, that's adapted from crying, and that's yes. that, that old exactly. song, too. Yeah. But do you hear it like this, and it's, it's like, way yeah. beautiful. Way more visceral. Yeah. Um, but then the, the original one is very much more just doo woppy but yeah, yeah lynch yeah. lynch loves yeah. that sound i mean i'm thinking of yeah like um what is it blue velvet in dreams yeah. in dreams oh my god in yeah. dreams he loves someone lip syncing to something uh, which is what this is also too. alma dover does that a lot yeah. a lot of those oh, yeah. kinds of like a, a show within a show yes. yeah i love that stuff anyway yeah. it's good sound victoria oh am i up for sound okay um you're up for a sound oscar all right <laughs> sweet um I mentioned this in the email, but I really love the sound of that light bulb coming on in the corral when the cowboy shows up. There's something (laughs) really like the hum buzz of that. I I don't, they had to spend time making that perfect. Let's take a listen. Lynch loves electricity. That's like a running thing with him. Yeah, yeah. And he took it to a new height without spoiling anything in the new Twin Peaks season with like that's people were traveling through electricity. Mm-hmm. He, oh God, he's so good. Have you guys seen? I know you guys do not like Mark Kermode. I generally like him. There's <laughs> a clip okay. of him though. Actually, let's just play it really quick. It's Mark Kermode asking David Lynch a question about the electricity motif in his films. One of the recurrent images in your films is of electricity arcing, is of you know light bulbs crackling on, and you have a you have a recurrent motif of you know like two points and something arcing between them, and it seems to me that this somehow relates to what you think about the synaptic arcs in our brain. When you talk about TM, when you talk about these things, you talk about making connections. It seems to me that that's what that recurrent visual motif is about. And I know you hate saying what things mean in your films, but am I right in thinking that that's at least in the right area. No. <laughs> I like that. What a, I mean, what a little a bit, he's kind of sort of like spoon feeding the analogy a little bit. So yeah. it's like too easy for David Lynch to be like, yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> like, it's funny. Cause like, I think, I think like, yeah, I think it is. It, it, watching the, the return, it does come off that way. Like, I think that is a very astute, observation yeah. but mm-hmm. yeah it feels more like a, a plea for affirmation <laughs> <laughs> yeah pl- uh, please tell me i'm right yeah, tell me i'm good a little bit yeah. no i do the electricity yeah when that light comes on too because there's like yeah. a stock clip of like electricity mm-hmm. coming on that a lot of movies yes. use yes. and obviously yeah they create yeah. their own no i've got to <laughs> amazing yeah that that but that that kind of um we were talking about the the noise going away in scenes mm-hmm. like like in the when the you know mm-hmm. the the winky scare and then there's the the other the corpse scare at 136.50 and it's uh it's like th- there's a, a a white noise that's happening actually and it's kind of like it and it increases and then it kind of cuts 
to to not no noise, but sort of like if your ear popped or like your mm-hmm. ear was just ringing or yes. something. And in both cases, that's like that, uh, like that's like you're suddenly you're in the eye of a tornado mm-hmm. feeling. And those those are great. And then of course just all of of Gerando, which is. Uh, uh, like the peak of that song around 150, 152. That's you mine know. too. It's such a oh, uh, You guys have the same one? I, we do. So and good. it's because for similar reasons as yours, I feel yeah. like that encapsulates the movie to me because yeah. I was even fooled. Like I've yeah. seen this movie. When this she gets is, up into the higher range. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I was like, beautiful. I was crying. I was like, oh my God, beautiful. And then beautiful. when she stops, I'm like, I was tricked. Yeah. Beautiful. It was great. It was such a good experience. Still incredible recording. You yeah. Know? Like just, I mean, wow. That's yeah. my favorite. Great eye it's makeup, moving. too. It's well, really great moving. eye makeup. Yeah. Since oh, yeah. Then, okay, that was my favorite sound. Mm-hmm. But then can I also have it well, also let's, be... Well, let's play the clip of that okay. one first. Okay. <laughs> Stunning. Okay, Coco. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Here's okay, hey, Coco. I put, I put like four in. As well. Oh, you did. Yeah, what I can't put like I've named like four different things. <laughs> you can have Coco. Yes. You should have your okay, Coco. Pleased to meet you. Oh, just call me Coco. Everybody else does. Wait there, and I'll go get the key. Okay, Coco. <laughs> oh well, good. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Wow. God. Well, we would normally do a Pauline Kale segment here, but she actually passed away with the year this film came out. And she had been retired for like a decade at that point. So she did not review the movie, considered pulling Ebert's review or something. But considering he, this was the only Lynch film he liked, I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of pulling his <laughs> review. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve it. What? Just you are kidding. So I'm just kidding. I generally I like Ebert. Ebert. I generally like him. He's wrong on that one, though. Sure. He can be wrong. Um, Let's do Letterboxd. Yeah, we have the good people of Letterboxd instead. Do you guys have any Letterbox? I did not find any. I, you, you guys, let them rip. Let them yeah, rip. We'll just, yeah, we're just yeah. going to sit back and listen. All right. All I feel right. like we would end up just seeing the same. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Don't want to step Often on we have like the same, some of the same. Um, yeah. Yeah. Five stars. This is La La Land's evil twin. Which yeah. kind of goes with what we said about Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I, I think it really fits for for Mulholland Drive. Yeah, yeah it's it's very that that uh, it's a it's a sort of an evil twin, maybe like an evil upper older sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes. it's about a Holland relationship, dis, the dissolution of a relationship against Hollywood, but yes. for for very different, different darker yeah. Uh, yeah. courses. It's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, I have a half star review here that just says such a waste of my precious time. I'm wow. truly disappointed. Expected something innovative and memorable, but innovative. ended up watching nonsense and porn instead. <laughs> <laughs> what are their top four? <laughs> <laughs> Thought all of the boredom I felt throughout because of the unnecessary long takes and scenes where nothing of importance happens was going to pay off at the end with some smart and shocking twist, but such a letdown, such a debacle. Okay. Debacle. debacle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your time is not that precious if you took the time to write that. Yes. Right. Exactly. And that's the first of three exactly. paragraphs I stopped What? There. Oh, yeah. Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> um, three and a half stars. Who shoots a vacuum? <laughs> <laughs> go on. Go on. <laughs> Uh, another half star. I don't know. I'm just getting a kick out of reading the bad yeah, ones. Yeah, you, you are. Yeah. This, this movie makes me feel like I'm having a stroke because of how damn confusing it is. I feel like I was tripping on shrooms, but also being lectured by Mr. David Lynch himself about what an underground and amazing filmmaker he is. Underground. This movie is a great recommendation for pretentious media studies <laughs> students who love to talk about themselves. The ending of this movie itself felt like the end of a shitty student film. Silencio, like he thought he ate that up. 
up, girl. S- oh, Jesus. STFU. Ew. <laughs> that is gross. I hate when I just I, I'm already just I'm so sick of certain internet lingo things. Like, yeah, you thought you ate and like yeah, all that. That's the thing. I've never even, heard yeah, that. Oh, you th- uh, like, oh, you thought you did something there. Yeah. It's called, <laughs> it's, you thought you ate? Yeah, it's the, the <laughs> oh, even just so when, when someone eat. oh, sorry, but they ate, or oh, you thought you ate, or oh, they really thought they did something there, or just, I get, I don't oh. know. It's There's annoying. so much, it's, it's gotten, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. It's gotten choking. <laughs> we good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this one's going to be hard to describe because it's a lot of emojis. You guys know the crying emoji? Oh, I'll yeah. You guys. Okay. Uh, yeah. Five stars. There's an emoji between every word. Okay. She wished she knew how to quit her. Yeah. That's, good one. that's cute. That's cute. I know. See, I like pulling the that's... funny, cute ones. Greg likes to pull, like, this man's know. a fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this idiot. <laughs> um, this is my last one. It's another half star. <laughs> Eating a pile of poop, having Gilbert Gottfried scream in your ear, and all the while suffering from COVID is what watching this movie is like. Death is more appealing. <laughs> oh my god also poor gilbert godfrey yeah, I think this real. was written after he had passed too i think january 2022 Ew. i think he had already passed yeah, i think you're uh, right I it's insensitive think, i just think the ones that are like that volatile and negative <laughs> i have to just wonder like do you like do you know how bad movies can be exactly yeah. like, do you know how pretentious yeah. and and they don't and, and fuck you troll inaccessible pretentious for the you have not seen that this is the this is the least of that this movie's really? generous like this movie's extremely generous yeah, yeah. and like yeah. it has like that Cohen sensibility in some of those You're vignettes right. it's, it's like, like entertaining it's too, it's too yeah. straightforward yeah. in a sense like he's he's had to backtrack yeah, like, yeah. I feel like that's why about. people are like taking their magnifying glasses to it yeah because it's like there's gotta they're be something more yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah they're getting too close to the Monet definitely this is my last one Five stars. I read somewhere that Billy Ray Cyrus blames David Lynch for Miley's crazy era, crazy era, and I'm not in the same context as Miley, but I think I'm going to start blaming every unhinged impulse I have on the Lynch media I've been consuming. The Lynch media. Is that true? Wait, how, what was the star rating on that? Five. No, it's not oh, true. Okay. You don't think Billy Ray Cyrus? Well, I guess they said, liked it at so least. It <laughs> I don't know. That was one of those reviews it. where I'm like, I feel like they're trying to. They, there's like it's kind of a. Uh, whatever. Why yeah, they're going for something. Whatever. They, 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 if they if they rank that high, they have way more clout than me. I don't, don't let me talk too much shit. <laughs> Why would they make up that Billy Ray said that? I don't know. Just trying to be funny. Sometimes I, I think someone it's, overthinks their review and goes like all around. Like I'm pos- guilty of that too. It's, it's entirely possible Billy Ray Cyrus might have said something <laughs> to that effect, like as a joke or yeah. in passing. I mean, we Maybe. don't know. There's not enough information. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you, they wanted to acknowledge that Billy Ray Cyrus, like the way you were like, oh, yeah. Hannah wants, you know, yeah. you want to acknowledge it. You also right. like the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. We, we both like the movie. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we just <laughs> talked about, yeah, we at this point, we're psychoanalyzing our, yeah. our the letterbox reviews we choose. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how certain ones get memefied and certain ones get like over, like with three women, there are no like meme ones. Everything is like this. Everybody Serious. has to write a dissertation about yeah. this movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas with... Uh, like Bo, like half of the people are just trying to write a bit, and that's like it just yeah. depends on where certain movies hit mm. the. I don't know. I don't know. It's a certain <laughs> type of cinephile versus general comedian esque uh, letterbox yeah. audience. Like, yeah, it's it's weird. It's interesting. Yeah, like it seems like this one had an interesting blend of of mm. memeified reviews. Even the nice ones, you know, as if it's a short thing, it's kind of a joke versus yeah. like the longer is that half star is like, that was just the first paragraph. I was like, it's interesting <laughs> yeah. just seeing what the general temperature of how people approach discussing a movie and how, yeah, just I guess like how much they want to show that they care. Yeah. Right. Like, I guess. Yeah. If that makes sense. It just right. sometimes I read them and I think it reminds me of that exercise that therapists will have you do. Where you write a letter and you don't send it. Yeah. Except oh, yeah. they sent it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm again guilt. I, who am I to judge? I yeah. mean, I don't know. I get out my angry thoughts in a in a book where no one sees it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Exactly. Uh, well, before we go, wait. We should go around. Wait. What's everyone's favorite Lynch film? I know. I, I said mine was Firewalk with me. No. I, I think I brought oh, up the sorry. Elephant Man. Oh, Elephant Man! You mm-hmm. did say Elephant Man. I did, I, this one, this is Mulholland Drive. Yeah, I was just really, I just really like what this one's what doing. About you, Jack? I probably Blue Velvet, mm. but I also really love this. So we've got we got all great choices. All, choi- all different choices here. Actually, I'm, I think I like this more than Blue Velvet. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. They're Lock very it in. close. Lock it in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, ba- no bad. No bad choices. Firewalk with oh, me. Firewalk with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. 
I mean, they're, they're it's they're, hard. It's hard. It's it's a great. It's like Kubrick films. It's there's, yeah. there's yeah. It's hard to. It's more about what's your least favorite. I think like right. you know. Yeah. Well, there's a correct answer with Kubrick. It's Barry Lyndon. No, I'm just kidding. Are you, are you for real? Oh, I'm you love obsessed Barry with Barry Lyndon. Okay. Oh, okay. I was, I was like, do I have to I'm throw about myself out I was going to say, I got to flip a table real quick. It's actually playing this. Uh, it's playing tomorrow night at the Academy Museum. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I saw it in a theater once with Leon oh, Vitale. Oh, fuck. That would be oh, yeah, so fun. He just, passed, right? he just passed. Oh, fuck. That would be so fun. What time? It's probably I think it's out. like 7 30. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then the Academy oh, yeah, Museum, a couple family. weeks from now, is doing Goodfellas on a Sunday evening. Oh, I know that's like such a bro movie, but like I can't yeah, see that yeah. enough times on it's the big screen. It's, 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 it's so a, good. A good movie is a good movie. Yeah, it's you know? true. A good movie is a good movie. Like, I'm going to a thing tomorrow, but if I can go to this, I'm going to go. Yeah, I got I to gotta go see family tomorrow. Boo. Boo. <laughs> so if it can get if it can get away from my family is <laughs> ball and shame. red men berry <laughs> exactly so, yeah. me too yeah. literally right yeah. oh my god i know right those are our, those are our people yeah yeah well this has been, <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun oh thank you god. chelsea Bye. and victoria yes. thanks for joining us thanks for having us yeah. Yeah. again you if you haven't heard breath of fresh movie go check it out we have the link to in the show notes you guys do a great show Thanks. you guys do, you a, guys great do a great show yeah. this is Aww. i like we're kind of like we're like uh invert we're we're, the, we're not so different you, you and i <laughs> <laughs> it's fun it's we're fun. not yeah. well no, thanks for joining us this Thank has been a blast guys. Thanks I'm again. glad that we had your help on t- tackling this one just because yeah, so, there's a lot to this one. You know, we needed four no, different a, perspectives. It's a treat. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah. It's just, I just oh, really, yeah. I just really like this movie. This, and, yeah, a treat. To me. A treat is uh, exactly right. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Right? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, do you guys want to play uh, oh, so, social media you, websites uh, yeah, or anything like that? The, the Breath of Fresh uh, yeah, movie I mean, the, you can follow Breath of Fresh Movie on Instagram and Twitter at Fresh Movie Pod. You can also email us at a Breath of Fresh Movie at gmail.com. I mean, my own, I don't really, I'm, I'm trying to get off the, the medias, so I'm, I'm good. You, you'll be able to find me if you find that. If you want to <laughs> just go to the Breath of Fresh Movie yeah. Twitter, it's her Twitter. And we're, and, and in, a good, in a good way. No, it's like, it's good. No, you're doing, this She's is, outing me. This, no, this is how we're here now. Like you're doing, That's you true. connect with people. I don't, I, I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah, do the, we also have um, magnets <laughs> and, um. <laughs> One of which is on my fridge right now. I know. I'm yes. looking at it. It looks great. Did you see it, Victoria? I did. Um, um, we're we're going to expand it to jigsaw puzzles, I think. Um, maybe like radio flyer wagon. I, I want spoilers away. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're ding, working ding. on that. You saw the email. Ding, ding. Yeah, I saw it. It was great. But thank you. That, maybe, our maybe clumsy like plug in. This is us plugging our show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> super uh, professional. And we should all do a movie night. And yeah. then we should all go rent the Elysian, do a panel, yeah. all yeah. four of us, and then oh. and then have a live Q and A. I see, I'm be, I'm I'm being I'm I'm super gotta, serial. Gotta you put guys. it out there. No, super no. serial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. manifest it. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, next week. <laughs> thank you both. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. It's been yeah. a joy to have you. Next week, Jackie and I will be covering the Third Man, the Carol Reed oh, film with Orson you. Wells. You've seen so. that, right? I have. Yeah. Great Ferris wheel scene. Great Ferris wheel yeah. scene. I love Joseph Cotton. Oh, God. I love God. So good. He's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> sorry. I'm out. No, I sorry. think Joseph Cotton could get it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We spent, the, I think I spent the majority of great Am- Magnificent Ambersons yeah, gushing over him. Oh, oh and our Citizen Kane episode. Yeah. I listened to that Magnificent Ambersons one. That was great. Yeah. 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 Incomplete movies. Well, come yeah. back next week. We're doing Third Man. Until then, I'm Greg. I'm Jackie. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Seen and Heard is an official podcast of the Arroyo Film Club, featuring Greg Kleinschmidt and Jacqueline Postagian. Theme music by Andrew Cox. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any questions, comments, or you just want to say hi, email us hello at seenandheardpod.com or visit our website, www.seenandheardpod.com.